I'm, I'm sitting there like, yo, my life's pretty much like fucking ruined, like forever. That was my perspective at the time. I thought to myself like, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if when I was first hurt, if I had a video that showed me how to go to a concert because I was pretty much written off going to concerts. So let me like show a newly injured wheelchair user like how to go to a concert. Yeah, I wanted to be on YouTube and like be a YouTuber or whatever, but I really just wanted to like make videos for newly injured people. And I just thought like, how dope would it have been if I, when I first got hurt and I'm laid up in the hospital and I'm on YouTube and I'm searching for wheelchair stuff that I found like this. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 113 of the Andrew Deitch podcast. I am very excited that you're here right now. The sound of my voice is traveling through your eardrums. That is uh, pretty cool. If this is your first time joining me, thanks. What's up? Um, if you don't know already, this show is all about having meaningful, in-person conversations with the most fascinating people that I know. And my goal is to shed some light on different perspectives, you know? I love chatting with people who have all kinds of different outlooks on life, maybe due to um, certain circumstances or obstacles they had to overcome or their background or whatever. I really love diving deep. And today's episode is a very, very special guest who has a quite unique perspective that most people do not have. But before we jump right into it, um, I wanted to let you guys know that this episode has been brought to you by Eyes Ahead Media. And actually, all future episodes are going to be brought to you by Eyes Ahead Media. Eyes Ahead Media, I'm going to say that a million times, um, is a digital agency that's focused on content creation for brands. And you'll hear more about that later. Um, obviously, we'll be talking about them a lot since they're going to be bringing you every episode from now on. So pretty exciting stuff. But let's jump into the episode. My guest today is someone who is extremely important to me. You already know who it is because you clicked on the episode. But he is one of the most important people in my whole life. And that would be artist, bodybuilder, entrepreneur, wheelchair user, and social media influencer, Richard Corbett. He was my guest on episode 47, where he shared his story about how just a few days before his 21st birthday, he fell 50 feet straight to concrete and ended up in a wheelchair. Doctors told him he would never walk again. Richard has recently launched his platform called Wheels to Walking, which aims to help newly injured wheelchair users regain their independence and improve their quality of life through videos and an amazing community of wheelchair users. If you've been paying attention at all, you would probably know that I've been working very, very heavily with Wheels to Walking over the past few months and probably more than you even realize um, up until this episode, but we will spill all the beans. And during this episode, we talked all about attending an event that changed his life, uh, what inspired him to start Wheels to Walking, battling depression, our new podcast, why the Andrew Deitch podcast studio that you see behind me uh, wouldn't even exist without him, and so much more. So without any further ado, please welcome my best friend, Richard Corbett. What's up, Richard? How's it going, dude? What's up, dude? How's it going? Richard Corbett. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. I just got out of the shower. I'm nice and fresh and clean. I got my hair all slicked. How, how nice is it that you can shower right before this podcast? Pretty clutch. I don't think anyone else has had the luxury of showering that early. Before, you did like too. That. Well, no, obviously me, but I'm just saying like no other guests are like, yo, let me pop over, have a shower, and then and then we'll do the podcast. Let me like, just pop into my shower real fast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No one really has that luxury. We'll explain everything in just a bit for it'll, everyone who's it'll make sense. Lost, it'll make sense. As, it'll make sense. Yeah. So this podcast is a long time coming. This is your like 10th podcast, but... The tenth podcast total, and your tenth podcast you've recorded with me, but yes, but also this is the second podcast that you've ever done on the Andrew Deitch podcast. That's right. Yeah, we've got eight other podcasts that we've done for for my shit. Yeah, yeah. And the last time we left you, we were talking about you know you had like some art projects going on. Obviously, if people are watching the video, they know that you're in a wheelchair currently which is like pretty unique. Only a couple of my guests have ever been in a wheelchair, you included, and Brandon. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's it. it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. But basically, obviously, like you've probably played more of a role than anyone that I've ever had on the podcast in the like, just the impact on the podcast. You've had more of an impact than anyone else on the podcast 
whether you know it or not. And it's weird because I don't know if like all my listeners like know that. You know what I mean? Like, well, they don't lot- really need to know that. I mean, it's mainly been a lot of behind the scenes stuff. If you think about it, like, it's a lot. We for those that don't know, I mean, now you're knowing. Andrew and I hang out all the time. Like we pretty much every day. Like pretty much every day. And if we don't hang out every day, we're on the phone talking and, and scheming and business planning and just you know, growing and developing together, which is super cool. Um, I don't have a relationship like this anywhere else in my life where we're pretty much on the exact same path and we, yeah. and we both want each other to succeed so much that we're willing to like work for each other, like do, doing stuff with each other, but also pushing each other forward at the exact same time. Yeah. Like, you know, they say... Which is kind of hard to find in a friend sometimes because... I think sometimes like one friend is a little bit more ahead or like one friend is more of like a mentor or whatever, but there's definitely like qualities with, with both of us that make it like a symbiotic relationship, which is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even from the, the first time we met, we bonded over similar likes and similar interests and yeah. everything from music to videos to podcasts. There was like a lot of stuff that we were like, how are we not already really good friends? friends? Yeah, literally. Like, how did this not work out? And then the more we've got to know each other, even our, our history, like our education and our extracurriculars activities and, you know, um, like, yeah, like we're both Eagle Scouts. Yeah. Both Eagle Scouts. Like we're both homeschooled. Both homeschooled. Um, both, both grew up in the church, yeah. you know, but are not necessarily like involved in it as much as now, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's definitely like an interesting parallel. It's, it's really cool actually. Cause I was talking to you about this recently, how, I felt like over the years, I've had a lot of really good friends, but I haven't had like someone that I've had like this close of a relationship with it, which is like really cool. And it's, and it's definitely people on the podcast have heard me talk about you a lot, especially the ones that I recorded in LA, because, um, a lot of people might not know that my trip to LA was with Richard. Actually, we, we went there together for um, a couple weeks and it was, was the, awesome. Yeah, and the point of the trip was for the growth of my personal brand. It was yeah. it was for shooting videos. Exactly. And in the intro, like I've already definitely explained kind of what you're doing right now, but let's kind of start with your your path of where we left you last time you were on the podcast. So it was episode 47. It was very well received. It was called Progress Not Perfection. Yes. It's funny that I know all that by heart. But 47 Progress Not Perfection. Yeah. yeah. And um you told me that you listened to that podcast like multiple times, like after it was released, you were like really vibing it because it was the first time you'd ever told your full story, right? It was the first time I had opened up about uh, my disability, my accident, how I got hurt, my struggles and challenges with addiction and mental health. And I got to share a lot of unique perspectives that I've gained in life through dealing with those things. Um, And even my, how, like, the the challenges and struggles and difficulties I had with kind of losing my religion, so to speak, to kind of stepping away. And, like, that was a whole thing that I had never really shared publicly before. Like, a few people knew that, like, oh, there's, like, oh, Richard, he's, like, not going to church anymore. But no one really knew that, like, I wasn't a Christian anymore and I didn't, Mm. that I didn't identify with that anymore. And, you know, I think a lot about, like, my mental health and my addiction stuff, like, I hid from because I was really ashamed of it. I almost didn't want that to be a part of my life and my personality so much so that I even like went on a whole like clean sweep of the internet. I like went through every search engine and did all the tricks I possibly could to find anything that had my name in it. All social media accounts wiped, purged, cleared. I wanted to kind of like erase all of my life. Um, A lot of stuff with my disability too. I didn't want to play that trope or play that card or I just wanted to be normal but I wasn't normal, but I wanted to pretend like I was. So um, I finally, when you asked me to be on the show, I was working in a, in a creative project where I felt really comfortable. I felt like I was, I was kind of living in purpose and I was really excited about what I was doing and I could then, then feel open to share like everything about my past that I've been kind of, that I've been kind of hiding. So being able to listen to it over again quite a few times was like really cool because at that moment, that was really the only thing online that existed that was me, mm-hmm. right? Like I had an Instagram, but it was just dumb. It was like RT Corbett, whatever. Yeah. Like it wasn't like optimized for any sort of personal brand. No, it was, it was just... It was, it was like the a couple of cool things of you. Like one of them was like that ax throwing thing. I remember literally... 
so from my perspective of it, the first time I went and recorded with you, um, Sheen Dar told me like, yo, you got to record with Richard. Shout out to Sheen. And, um, shout out Sheen. Yeah, shout out Sheen. She made this happen for sure. Um, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, she's like, you got to meet my friend Richard. And I like tried to stalk you and like look you up. Because obviously, you know, meeting someone for the first time, you try to do some research. And especially with the podcast, research has become a big part of my recent episodes because... As you know, a lot of my recent stuff has been all really cool people that I'd never met before and I would have only met them and connected with them because of the podcast. So I've got to do some research so that I can actually have a conversation with them. And Like the two episodes before this were complete strangers. Yeah, complete strangers. And actually with Simon's, I didn't even have much time to do research. Um, and that was just because I wasn't sure it was going to happen and we were working so hard in LA. Like I, all, my, all of our free time was dedicated to just working and it just didn't fit in. So literally when he was telling me some of the stuff that he did, it was, I was finding some of that stuff out for the first time. And actually with Simon, kind of like with you, you know, that podcast was like the first time that you really solidified and put like a ribbon on like who you were and like kind of condensed it. Yeah, yeah. Condensed it. And I've made some cool promo stuff for Simon and he's been like really excited to share it everywhere because a lot of people know about his photography, but they don't know that he like builds houses and stuff. And because it's in that self bragging way, and he doesn't even, ever want to talk about right. it. But because I'm talking about it, he can then share my video and be like, Hey, I was on this podcast. And then people are like, Holy shit, you build like luxury real estate. And you're also like, a, you directed a Super Bowl commercial. Like it's really cool because people can, you know, he can share that without feeling like a dick that he's just like, sh you know, spilling his guts about all the cool stuff that he does. Yeah. Kind of like his little behind the brand when he talked about starting the, he, you know, he was a total like high school dropout that, you know, transitioned into art school at, at 16 and then totally even failed at art school. And at yeah. eight, in eight, 18 started a, a really cool, um, like gra agency. graphic, graphic, des like design agency that yeah. be before computers, Literally. But, like, that if you haven't listened to that episode, that's please episode, go back. Episode and, 111, 111 yeah. is a really cool episode. It's too short. Like <laughs> it's unfortunate he had to leave. It's too like there is so much more. Next time we go to LA, I'm definitely regrouping with Simon to do another one because he's got way too many stories. But anyways, this is not the Simon Needham podcast. This is the Richard Corbett <laughs> podcast. But anyways, just I'm just about, trying yeah. to parallel to Simon's episode because in a way it was like a cool way for him to like in one space put that nice little package around what he did. And I feel like that's the same thing that kind of happened with you. And, you know, when Sheen reached out and I was stalking your pages, I didn't even know what you did. You know, like I kind of figured you were an artist and then there was some stuff where you were like jacked and you were like flexing. And then there was some stuff where you were in the wheelchair and like Sheen didn't even really tell me that you were in a wheelchair. She just said you were an artist and you were really cool. So I was like, D is he... What? Uh, I don't know. And then like when I rolled up to your studio, you kind of like hobbled out to the car. Yeah, like waddled out. And you like, literally like waddled out without his chair. And I'm like, I guess he's good now. Like he's not in a chair. Like, you know what I mean? Why does he use a wheelchair sometimes and other times not use why, a wheelchair? Why are you inconsistent? Why are you either be wheel boy or do not be wheel boy? Don't you know wheelchair people are always in wheelchairs? Don't you know that leg boy is always leg boy and wheelchair boy is always wheelchair boy? What are you? What? What is La, this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're confused at all about, yeah, why the fuck is he standing sometimes and why, go watch the first episode, the first like official of wheels to walking video the, it's on, that's going to be on your youtube channel we're going to talk all about it in just a little bit but yeah the, that first video explains everything about why can i walk but also i'm in a wheelchair like why can i walk a little bit like why do i use a wheelchair if i can walk yeah that's, that's, the, that's the big the question there we go. That's, that's the title no that's a big question a lot of people like but i definitely know it's a huge question that no one asks directly because no one has ever asked me directly but everyone asks all the side questions and everyone asks like for example they'll ask you before like, they ask, ask me. me yeah yeah they're like wait so can he is he good like can he walk like what why is he you know it, it's funny because you're right it's one of those questions you don't want to ask directly because it's rude but um you definitely want to know because you're curious as fuck and everyone's curious as fuck about you i'm very unique yeah. in many ways and one of them is that because yeah. i've definitely met people when i was in the chair and then saw them again when i was standing when i was on my crutch and they literally didn't know who i was and vice versa yeah, totally like they it's and it's very interesting because even contextually i'll have some relationships that people only see me in the chair and some relationships where people only see me standing and uh. if they and if they ever see the opposite they're like wait what yeah, like literally. they just don't, they don't understand. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's 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 definitely weird because it's kind of like we've talked about this on your podcast before that people that like you see they they're a cashier at Walmart or whatever and you see them all the time because you go to Walmart all the time and then you see them out in public and you're like where do I know that guy because he's not wearing his Walmart uniform he's just like an out in public guy like, I, I know have- that guy but I don't know him and it's like same thing with Wheelie Boy it's like oh I I know that guy's face but I don't know where and they're like oh he's wheelchair guy wait why is he not in a wheelchair what the fuck like it's it's definitely very yeah anyway straight up it's it's weird and um. You're fucking weird, man. But yeah, definitely, you know, I, I bottled out to see you. I said hello. So that was yeah. really confusing and brought you into the studio I was working in. And I was working on a, a project that I really believed in. It was really exciting. It was really cool. Um, it was like a sculpture. What, what, what would you call it? It was a sculpture. It yeah, was a sculpture it was project. It was cool. it was pr- I was doing the production side of a sculpture project. And if you want to learn more about it, go listen to episode 47 towards the end. I talk about this more in detail. Um, but... I'll, I'll condense it for you. Um, an artist and I were working together to um, create a sculpture project. She was, um, and I was together collaboratively designing a sculpture, and then I was going to produce it in in mass. Um, and in the art world, mass is not big numbers. We're, we're talking small numbers here. Hundreds? Hundred, if hundreds. Yeah. If, well, maybe 50, maybe 100. Yeah. Um, and also in the art world, um, scarcity also increases value, kind of like the exotic car market. Yep. A lot of exotic cars are 500 cars, and that's it. Yeah, I remember after the podcast, we actually we made a little video, and you, I got to like help you make one of them. Mm-hmm. And I remember you telling me like, "Yeah, we're gonna probably sell these for like you know a thousand bucks or something like that." Like it was it was, it was like a lot, m- way more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit, they're gonna make!" You know, I was doing the math in my head. I'm like, "These little freaking X sculptures are gonna be sold for a couple thousand or whatever, and they're they're making fifty of them. That means they're making fifty grand, or you know what I mean? Like, well, I yeah. was calculating. I'm like, "Damn, there's some money in this shit." Well, it was definitely um, unique materials. Um, we had one that was made of crystal, quartz crystal, from the beaches of Destin. We had one that was going to be made of bronze. Um, we had another one that was going to be made um, of a really unique kind of like plastic, like a resin. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a, and each one was going to have their own custom stand and their own custom packaging, and it was definitely going to be like higher society. Like, like that was who our market was was collectors and. Um, it it eventually reached a point where she and I just. Um, stopped getting along where um, the space was getting crowded it seemed like she was taking out some anger on you too like it seemed like there was maybe some projections I don't I don't know the full situation I just know that there was definitely stuff going on in her life um, that she was keeping pretty private and definitely it was leaking into the our relationship a little bit and whenever I would address it and, you know, stand up for myself and kind of be like zero tolerance, I don't care what's going on in your life. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't deserve this treatment, whatever you want to call it. You know, I want to be gentle about this topic of conversation because I definitely name her in the previous episode and, I uh, and, and she's not a bad person, you know, like she's, yeah. she, she's still doing her own thing, her, making her own saying, art. Yeah. It was just a matter of it reached a point where um, like I have a high tolerance for a lot of things and I just was kind of like, you know what, I'm out uh, and I just stepped away from the project and walked away. Um, there was a little bit of back and forth because I think she believed I was going to like steal her project. Mm. Um, and you're like well, cleaning your hands. I, I, was like, cleaning my, I was like, I'm out of this. You know, I'd, I'd yeah. put a lot of time and attention and energy into it. It was one of the longest pre-productions I've ever done. It um, could have turned out lucrative, but like I'm not in it for the money. I never was in it for the money. I was in it because I like the project and I like working with the materials. And there was, just, there was just we just came to a lot of disagreements, and it just didn't work out in the end. And yeah, but things but, happen. But so what? And I remember thinking to myself, like, okay, um, I really like doing art like I'm an artist I'm finally back into the art world after being out of the art world for a while um physical medium art and it was it was like okay so what's what's the next step um she was the kind of the sole owner of that studio I was a guest you know I was I was working in her studio we were sharing it but it was it was her studio so when I left I'm like okay I gotta get my own studio so I went and found a place really cool place it's like a collaborative workspace and I got my own studio and it was ready to be rebuilt, ready to be built. And it takes like four to six weeks for them to build. 
a studio. And so it was the, like a warehouse space and they had to put up some walls for you, right? Yeah, so it's a big, gigantic, open floor um, warehouse and you get to choose the right, you know, the loud side or the quiet side, which basically the quiet side is for people that can make art quietly. The loud side is for people that make art loudly. And, <laughs> and I was loud. Banging some shit and yeah, yeah, all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so, I, you know, loud. And so I, I chose... You're a pretty loud dude. Well, I, yeah, but <laughs> even, even you know, I'm talking like drills and hammers and machines that's, that's and That's the metals kind of stuff I mean, material. like when you're in the gym and stuff, like you're not shy about like banging around some shit and like when you're making stuff, you're not shy about like fucking no. banging some shit out. Because I honestly, truthfully don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about me because people are always like staring at me anyway. So I'm like, fuck it. Like, I don't Might care. Might as well give them something to stare at. Exactly. Like if you're going to be like a rudely and aggressively like eyeballing me, like let me just be obnoxious. So like you now have a reason to stare at me, like fuck off. You know, <laughs> like that was at the gym today. <laughs> like I was like, just, you know, it's, it's, it's partially, you know, I mean, but it's not, like, against etiquette. Like, we were moving heavy weight. Like, you can't set down heavy weight, like, gently. If you were at Planet Fitness, we would have gotten kicked out. <sighs> For sure. The lunk alarm would have gone off multiple times. You know, the one time I ever worked out at a Planet Fitness, the lunk alarm was broken. So I took full advantage of that. You were being full lunk. I mean, I wasn't being full lunk, were, but I was just being, I was just being myself. Mode. Like, it's we're not in a library. You're in the gym. Make some noise. Sweat a little bit. You know, like, be a little messy. Like, don't, don't act Preach, like you're in a, you're a library. Preach. Um, so anyway, I... Um, what if Planet Fitness had a library in it so they could literally be like, this is a library, actually. <laughs> Shh, sir, sir. <laughs> There's like a couple of books in the corner. So you're like, this isn't a library. And they're like, actually? <laughs> like, <laughs> actually? We have the bodybuilding encyclopedia over here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like some fucking giant dudes like flipping through pages of like a tiny little book. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, so anyways, you got your own studio. So and I, while I was waiting for it to get built, um, I had the unique opportunity uh, to go to uh, a Tony Robbins event. So I've always been the type of person that's into personal development and self-betterment. I've always been the type of person that is always on the quest to better myself in every way that I possibly can. And that was even prevalent through um, my addiction, which I, I talk about a little bit in my in my previous episode, where I, it's like, even when I was at my lowest and at my worst, I was still seeking something to kind of like fix me, when the truth is I honestly needed to go inside and fix myself, but I was always looking for some book or some course or some event, something to go to. I don't think I ever went to any of them, but I was always seeking. And this was one that I've been wanting to go to for a while. It's a uh, a day with destiny. There, no, what is it's, it it's a, a UPW unleash the power within. Gotcha. It's a Thursday night, a f all day Friday, all day Saturday, half a day Sunday. So it's like condensed, like three days. Or no, it's all day Thursday. I don't remember. Either way, it's like seventy. Oh, it's like seventy or eighty hours crammed into like three days. Like from when wow. you wake up to when you go to sleep, you are at this event. And it is like a, a speed course of like, so I've been to years of therapy and worked the 12 steps and read a bunch of books and done a bunch of programs and, you know, really done the best to discover who I am. Everything from meditation to, I mean, just literally everything I can possibly think of. And this was the most like dense, crammed, compact, explosive, like, version of everything I'd ever done, just even like more epic and better. And Is it the one where they do the coal walking thing? That's one of them, yeah. That's one of them. I'm assuming you didn't do the coal I walking. I did not walk on coals. I did not. <laughs> I, 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 I am not a fire walker, thank you very much. The very first night, dude, they I'm happy enough to walk at all. I am not, not going not. to do that on coals. My skin sores would be not <laughs> I, I very... Could, I could lose a foot. Really. Literally. Literally. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but it was. What if they fucking made you? I mean, they don't. No, I know. You, they don't make you do anything. <laughs> what, if, what if they made you roll over them? I would be so into that. Honestly, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> if there was like slow mo epic B roll of you rolling over oh, some coals, that'd be dude, sick. So fire. Anyways, literally. Um, so <laughs> I went to this event and it was so incredible and so amazing. I shattered limiting beliefs. I set focus in my mind of of things I wanted to do and. What kind of limiting beliefs? I don't remember. I have to look at, look them in my journal. Like I have this whole like workbook mm. that like 
I remember I went through but it. But like, you know, like what were things that you, the, like, were you believing yourself about yourself? Well, or whatever like, that... I'm not good enough or like, um, I'm broken or damaged mm. or no one would pay attention to me if I said anything, you know, Shit. and, and what's, and what's cool is like you write these things down and then you go through an exercise where you and a partner like make fun of it together. Huh. And you're like, that is so, or that is such bullshit. <laughs> like you do like this weird, like where you literally like make fun of your own limiting beliefs. It's like the other day when we were like, <laughs> Richard Corbett, Corbett fell 50 <laughs> feet and is now confined to a wheelchair. <laughs> it's literally like the most fucked up thing that's ever yeah. happened to you. But we were literally just like dying laughing about it because it was right. Because it's so funny, like how she said it. And yeah, stuff. and that's literally one of the things they make you do. You have to be like, you know, I'm not good enough, and no one will ever love me. And then you shove your finger up your nose, and you say, and that's such bullshit. And then you go. Pfft. Like, you literally, like, that's train funny. your brain to, like, make fun of yourself. And then the next time you think about it, you're like, Haha, that's not real. Um, but hmm. anyway, I went through this whole thing. And, man, I was on such a high. I was on such cloud nine. And, like, I made some really – I went down there with a really good friend. And we made some other great friends. And it was, like, such an amazing experience. And, like, so amazing of an experience that, like, I got it in my head that it would be a good idea to, like, stop taking my meds. Because I'm like, I am cured of depression, you know, like, like a depression was a part of my past, but not a part of my future. I am a happy person, you know, like, cause you say all these like positive affirmations and, and drugs still kind of help me though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, they definitely, that's one of the things. Drugs definitely still play a, a critical part of my life though. <laughs> yeah. So they, they definitely on Sunday, on the last day, there's like a, it's like a the health and wellness day. And one of the days they talk about is like um, prescription medications. And one of the guys is like, listen, we're not giving you any advice. Like we're not telling you what to do, what not to do. Um, you know, always listen to your doctor, but just know that like some of these things do these kind of things to you and they can prevent you from this and prevent you from that. And like, they don't really demonize it, but they definitely, it's kind of like, we're not doctors, you know, don't take our advice. Yeah, they're, they're you just know, making you question what, they're, they're, you, what they're, they're, you're thinking, well, what you're I, taking, because, what you know. And it's the truth, because like a lot of people are totally. taking things their doctors told them to take when they don't really need it. And the, Or they walk in hoping to get prescribed with some shit. Like they walk in and if they walked out and they weren't prescribed with some shit, they're like, my doctor's not doing shit for me. He doesn't even, whatever. Like he doesn't even care. He didn't even give me any medicine. And, and it's, it's like, like, but I gave you a pamphlet and like the name to a, psych, uh, to a therapist. Yeah. Because that's what you need, not drugs. But, yeah. but anyway. But people want a quick fix. Exactly. And and that was kind of the angle they were going. It's like, listen, whatever. Yeah. And I got it in my idea. So I went cold turkey on like um, a sleep medication, an antidepressant, a nerve pain medication, and a mood stabilizer. So like four psychiatric like mental health drugs. And I was on a roll, dude. Like I started, I was like feeling great and like feeling good and like feeling feelings again and feeling amazing. And like my studio got done and I was like ready to crush it. And then by like week two, I was so dead. Like I couldn't even like get up and get moving on my own out of bed. And if you remember what I talked about in episode 47 was that due to my drug addiction, my brain's ability to create certain chemicals is forever inhibited. So I have to take mental, these particular psychiatric medications, these mental health meds like antidepressants, mood stabilizers, stuff like that, because my brain is literally incapable of creating their own. So it's not like my brain is like good. The factories are shut down. The factories are shut down. And... It, that just had to do with like the years and years of narcotic drug abuse and that remapped and rewired my brain. So the end result is I have this studio space that's like rearing to go. I've got like direction and purpose in my life. I'm like so excited to go. What kind of stuff were you planning on making? Not sure. I just knew. You just wanted to like dick around and like. I was just ready to just build and make and create. And, you know, I wanted to work with metal and, you know, I wanted to keep experimenting with like mold making and casting. And, you know, I just wanted to like kind of just do whatever I wanted to do. And I thought to myself like, oh, I can share my story through my art because I knew I wanted. That's one of the things that Tony Robbins kind of helped me like realize in myself is I, I not only like needed to tell my story, but I like envisioned a life for myself 
through like meditation of like what I would do if I, if I didn't tell my story. Like that's one of the exercises they take you through is an imagining like how much of a piece of shit failure you'd feel like if you don't do what you said you were going to do. But then after you go through that, you flip it and then you go through what your life would look like if you did do it. It's like really cool. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, huh. And where you literally like in a group of 3000 people, like the lights go down and you just get like, he like instructs you on how to get like really angry and sad and depressed and imagine a miserable life. And then like the lights come up and the music comes up and it changes. And it's like, he's, he's, he's a master of psychology, um, which is like, like he, he knows how to manipulate people like for the good. Exactly. Right. Um, but it's, and it's also like those, uh, the associations, like turning the lights down and everything helps you get into that mental state. Turning the lights up makes you, helps you get into that mental state, all that kind of stuff. Well, one weird thing that I still do is my thumbs. He did this one thing with my trigger where if I, I, I grip onto my thumbs like this, mm-hmm. I feel really good. Huh. Like anytime, anywhere. Because it's like, a weird thing that you wouldn't normally do and you've associated that motion. I've, asso- with- I've associated that with a particular exercise we did. And now huh. and now I literally can just like, at any time, I'll just like put my, if people on video, they can see, I, I just literally just like put you do my- that and you just have an orgasm immediately. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was like that Joe Rogan bit where he talks about how they, they had the, they rewired this lady's brain so that she had like an, or- an yeah. orgasm button. That is really funny. I don't want to spoil Joe Rogan's new bits, but we went yeah. and saw him in LA quite a few times. So crazy, but um, but anyway, sorry, I, I made your story sound terrible. <laughs> but but anytime you do that, it makes you feel really good because it brings you back to that moment. And I don't even space. I don't even remember what we were doing or how we did it or what the, what the practice was of the exercise. But so anyway, I am like like erased all these limiting beliefs. Like I'm super excited. I'm like ready to tell my story. Like I'm like cruising on momentum. I make the very unwise decision to remove myself from meds. I get the studio space and then I crash so bad that I sunk into probably one of the worst depressions I've ever, I've sunk into in years and years and years and years and years. And it was 100% my own fault. So for like four, four months, maybe even longer from what I remember, I could pretty much only like get out of bed, maybe shower, eat, go to the gym and talk to one person a day. And that was like the most successful day I would ever have. Like if I could, if I got like three out of those five things done, I felt like it was a success because all the rest of the time was spent like in bed, just completely incapacitated. During that time... Were you off your meds the whole time? No, I got back on them, but like around week two or three when I was just completely nosediving, I was like, God, Richard, you stupid idiot. Why did you think this was a good idea? You know, but it's totally like my fault. Like I yeah. made I made the decision and I was just like operating on willpower alone. It was just bad. It was a bad choice, bad decision. Um, and I think that happens a lot with people that have mental health issues. This is like that, last winter, right? Last winter. Um, well... 2019 winter, 2018 winter. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I started it. Oh, two, in, I started the podcast in like May of 2017. So I yeah, think. it was like November 2017 that I went that I went to Tony, and then when I came back in December of 2017. So it was like the beginning of 2018. Yeah, gotcha. So the beginning of last year. Yeah. Yeah, it was rough, man. It 2017 was, to 18 winter. Yes. And this is currently we are in the 18 to 19 winter. So yes. it was last winter. Gotcha. Yeah, it was, it was. Glad we cleared that up. Um, it, and it <laughs> math was, and months and dates and shit, <laughs> we're both pretty bad at we're it, so, I feel like. We're so bad at it. <laughs> Hashtag homeschooled. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. My mom was a great homeschooled mom. Um if you want to know about my homeschooling, go back and listen to episode 47. <laughs> it was wild. Definitely um, wild. That is a good explanation. So I definitely um, had to climb out of that hole first. And that took a lot of work. And in that time, I kind of I got a lot of thinking done. And in a lot of my thinking, I realized, like, okay, maybe... I don't want to do physical medium art. Like, okay, maybe I want to do something else. Okay, maybe the only reason I was doing physical medium art is because this girl offered me a project back in physical medium art. And since I had done physical medium art before, 
I just dove into it and maybe I don't even want to have the studio space because like I'm still paying rent on it and like four months in I'm still paying rent on it. How many it. times have you gone? Three, four, five times total. Wow. Like over that four or five month period. like. So you were paying for rent on a place and you went like once a month. If that. Like not even. Like I could barely even get myself to get in the car and go down there. I could barely even get myself into the kitchen from the bed. Like that's the level of. <laughs> Wait, you just said kitchen was so funny. Kitchen. Get- Kitchen? The ki- I can barely get myself from the, the kitchen. The, the kitchen? <laughs> 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 but you, you, seriously, it was just like a fucking nightmare. You couldn't even get yourself to do anything. I mean, it was the most successful depression I've ever been through in the sense that, like, I had enough willpower to meal prep once um, a, week. a week. So you so, had food. So all, Healthy I ha- food. so all I had to do was get up and microwave. I didn't have to actually cook because that took too much willpower. I had enough to actually get to the gym and work out for an hour, hour and a half, even though that was probably the only energy I had for the day. I had, an, I had enough willpower to make sure I called, texted, or like hung out with a friend or like went to a meeting at least once a day because I knew isolation was just gonna make it worse. I also learned how to not go negative and like beat myself up for it and be mad. You know, like I couldn't go positive, but I also knew don't go negative. So I kind of repeated this mantra in my head that was like, if you can't go positive, just don't go negative. And like I watched. What 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 was it feeling? Like you're saying you can't go positive. Like what about it that, what about it was making you feel like you could not go positive? Like if you've never struggled with the depression, it's, it's hard to explain. But um, most people I think have a natural energy that they have during the day, um, a natural gusto for life, a natural excitement. So little things that you normally do are just a part of your life. Uh, making the bed, eating food, taking a shower, going to the gym, talking with friends. Like that's just like a part of your flow, right? When you're dealing with depression, those things um, are work. And they're really laborsome. Um, they're really challenging. Like to take a shower, you're like, okay, well, I gotta get out of bed, and that's that's hard. And then I gotta go into the other room, and then like get in the shower, and then I gotta like turn on the shower water, and then I gotta like put on shampoo, and then like rinse it off. You literally like play everything in your head, and you think about how draining and how exhausting it's gonna be, and then so you just like either don't do it, or if you do it, it just feels like you ran a marathon. Like I remember there'd be plenty of times that I would like wake up late obviously because i'd be sleeping in a lot i'd take a shower i'd eat food and i'd be back in bed because i was just that damn exhausted because you're operating on pure willpower alone so most people run on willpower at like hour eight of work or hour 10 of work you wake up and you have to live only within willpower so you only have a certain amount of willpower that you have throughout the day and like that's that's the and the only way you get more willpower is by just like recharging just like laying around and doing nothing Mm -hmm. so taking a break taking a break chilling relaxing hanging out you know so outside and and shooting b-ball outside of the school yes but then a couple of guys they were just they're just up to no good um (laughs) for all those i'm not gonna keep don't understand that reference go away you're 19 years old uh (laughs) Um, I hope if you're 19 years old, you still get the reference. So you want to hear something funny? I knew a guy, side note, sidebar, who said that when he would go talk to girls um, at a bar, he would say, finish this sentence, <coughs> in West Philadelphia, born and raised. And if they couldn't finish it, he wouldn't talk to them because he knew they were underage. He's too young for you, bro. Yeah, he, He's he, too young she, for you, bro. He knew they were too young. That was his, That's funny. That was his way. He goes, finish the sentence. That's funny. I like that. And even if they were overage and they didn't know the Fresh Prince, like, do you want to be dating that girl anyways? Someone who doesn't have Fresh Prince, come on. No. The answer is no. <laughs> answer is no. So and I if find... you're a girl listening to this right now and you haven't watched Fresh Prince, I suggest... Or at least know the, the song. Or at least know the freaking song. Anyways. My niece and nephew have like a kid's bop version that they listen to and they even know the song. That's that makes me more sad. Um, that it's on that kids, there's a kids' that, bop there's version. A kids bop version yeah. That makes me depressed. So, anyways, um, um, <laughs> anyway, so I, as we're talking about real depression, I'm like, that makes me depressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, so, so with enough uh, time with medication, with enough 
uh, discipline, with enough patience, patience primarily, because I had to just let my, re I totally like fucked up my brain chemistry so hard and just like flushed all the good drugs, good chemicals down the toilet by not taking them. I had to like reintroduce Recharge. and like up some doses. And like in the end, I was kind of like on more meds than I was before because I just couldn't cope like it was just like I and and all the things in life that make you happy I couldn't do because they make me um so let me put it to you this way uh emotion comes from motion so the, the motions that you do throughout your day throughout your life um create emotions positive emotions so I was having a hard time doing anything that made me happy because I didn't have the the energy or the willpower to do it. So you have to rely on self-discipline, but you don't have any self-discipline because you're working off willpower alone. And if you have no willpower, if you're only operating on willpower, then you can't have discipline. It's just a, it's just a whole fucking mess. But eventually I made my way out of it. The spring came, the nice weather came. I was able to kind of get out of it in the sense that you know, showers didn't feel like work. Making food didn't feel like work. Hanging out with friends didn't make making my bed. It just, it was like, I was, I was getting back to normal and, but I'd kind of talked to myself out of this art thing because <clears throat> I eventually like called the studio and was like, Hey, I'm, I, you've seen me not be there. Like the, the dude who ran the warehouse was texting me and be like, Hey bro, is everything okay? I noticed you haven't been around the studio. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not, go I'm not having a good time right now. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> what did you say to that? He's like, oh, well, just let me know if there's anything I can do to help. I was like, yeah, I'll be sure to let you know. I was just like, I'm just like in a real bad spot right now. Like, because, you know, I think a lot of artists are real empathetic too. Totally. You know, like he himself has been through difficulties and challenges in his life. And a lot of other people that I met in the place had been through difficulties and challenges in their life. And they were super cool about it. Like, I remember at one point, even a couple months ago, he reached out. He's like, hey, man, just let me know if you ever want to, like, me, like, put your stuff on my website because, you know, I like what you do and I think you're pretty cool and I know you're not around here anymore but just like let me know if I can help that's which, cool which reminds me I just thought of that right now that someone will reach out to definitely um anyway um so. business mind activated <laughs> make a mental note of that invert the spoon aerate it Rise it up. <laughs> that mm. top note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, there, for all of you that don't know, there's a lot of inside jokes that are happening during this podcast. It's okay. Just, like we said before, we hang out all the time. We hang, we're like literally. My girlfriend calls him my live-in boyfriend because I hang out with him more than I hang out with my own girlfriend. I think we're, I am the live-in boyfriend. You are my live-in boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, yes. So. It's just not, yeah, anyways. Anyway, um, here we go again. At least I can, anyway. So you, you, the guy called you, he's like, yo, what's up? And you're like, cancel my fucking studio. I'm yeah, not going. And, yeah, and he pretty much But like, you got back out of it and you're like, I need to do something because I'm not doing the studio shit. It's not working out, but at least I'm like able to kind of make my bed, fucking take a shower, go to the gym and not be completely wasted. Yeah, and, and another unfortunate thing about being in my depression for me personally is like my pain gets real bad. Um, mm, yeah. and, I, and I have to take a lot of like physical breaks with, with my pain and stuff. And, and I was thinking about like what kind of work I wanted to do. And I was like, okay, it needs to be something that I can do when I want to and also not do when I want to. Okay, it has to be something that I can work out of my bed if I have to. I'm like, okay, it has to do something. You'd be a cam girl. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I'll be a cam boy. <laughs> Holla. Oh, I just don't, dude, I, wheelchair I just don't, fetish is real. I just don't want to see who's on the other camera, on the other side. I don't think you do. Good. Unless you pay a lot. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So. Anyways. Anyway, so I'm, 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 you're just like the king of rabbit trails tonight, bro. I'm fucking loving it. Cheers to that. <laughs> the king of what? <laughs> rabbit trails. Dude, this is a podcast. We, we're all about the rabbit trails. Yeah, boing, boing, boing. So anyway, like I was going through all these things in my head of like what I wanted it to be, but also like what I not wanted it to be. Like it had to fit my life. It had to fit my lifestyle and it had to fit like the autonomy that I wanted to have and, and all this stuff and I've always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to do some type of like video stuff, like some type of YouTube stuff. 
And I've had that in my mind since I went through a depression in 2016 where I watched every single one of Casey Neistat videos from the beginning. I watched all of Casey Neistat videos. I was also watching Fun for Louie at the time. I was also watching Ben Brown at the time. Like that was my day outside of like doing the things I needed to do to survive. That was that was my like those that was my people. Those are my community. Like being able to go on daily adventures with people, you know, like to go on adventures with Ben Brown and through Africa and like to go on adventures with Louie while he was building that bus and like to go with Casey while he was building Beam and like to be a part of those people's journeys every day while they were doing daily uploads was like really important to me and really impactful and I really appreciate their stuff and this ladies and gentlemen is called foreshadowing. It's called foreshadowing ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> And so I remember um, <laughs> like some, some words of advice that Casey said, it doesn't matter the camera equipment that you have, it's a story that you tell. You know, it doesn't matter, you, you have to, sh- Dan would say this, you have to share your unique perspective. You have to share a part of your life that is, is a pers- you know, is specifically and objectively you, but no one else has access to. And I'm sitting there like, oh, that's me. Like, there's no one like me. Um, and all the things that I used to run away from, you know, like the injury, like the disability, like the addiction, like the mental health stuff. I'm like, oh, I can talk about all these things and talk about my experience and what to do and what not to do. And, and, uh, my very first, uh, vlog I did after buying a random camera on Amazon, after doing some research and getting a memory card and getting an editing program and like, um, all this stuff was, uh, when did we start connecting again? Ooh, good question. Because I feel like you, like, I can't really remember, but I feel like a couple of times you were like, yo, um, come hang out, like, at, you know, like, at my place. Like, I think one time we went and watched the sunset or something, or we watched the moonrise or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. With, like, a, Sid and, with and, Sid and, and Sheen. And, 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 and uh, Anas. Anas, Anas yeah, that yeah, That was before yeah, yeah. Ian moved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, so we were slowly starting to like reconnect again. And I remember like the first vlog I made, it was like a Casey Nastat style vlog of like going to feed a friend of mine's cat. I just like went along one on this adventure. I, I edited it and I uploaded it on private, sent it to her on my personal channel, not even on my Wheels to Walking channel. Wheels to Walking channel didn't even exist on my personal channel. And I feel like I've deleted that footage and it and deleted the video. That's Sad. I don't think it's you sad. deleted. The, did you delete the video? I might, I, you showed it to me. I might have. I'm the you king, showed it to I'm me the once. king of deleting shit when I shouldn't delete shit. I think I might have. Yeah. Dude, I'm so bad at deleting everything. Um, mainly because I'm zero percent sentimental, and I'm like, what use would this ever use? It's just taking up space. Delete. And then obviously, like later down the road, I'm like, oh, I should have kept that. But anyway, I, I like made this fun little thing, and it was cool, and I liked it, and she liked it, and it was sweet, and I was like, let me, let me just start documenting cool stuff that I do and like share it with people because you know all right let me just share it and my very first video I think was my concert video right yeah I went to a concert and I went to see baby metal and I made a video on YouTube and it was about to go like how to go to a concert in a wheelchair because I remember when I first got hurt um, I was really sad that I couldn't go to concerts anymore I thought I couldn't go to concerts um, cause I didn't know how to go to concerts. I, I didn't think it was possible for someone in a wheelchair to go to a concert. Was this before you decided like a name for your channel and stuff? Or did oh, you already compl- kind of like, no, nah, this is, this is way before any of that. And, um, or maybe I had just switched my Instagram over to wheels to walking. What gave you the inspiration for that name? Like, did it just come to you? Like randomly? it literally just popped in my head one day and I was like, got to nab it. Like, cause it's literally the. The, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's literally the story of like from wheels to walking, but I'm like, I'm, I'm both. Yeah. And so I made this concert video and um, for anyone who's ever tried to start up a YouTube channel, it's harder than getting views and likes and followers on Instagram because on Instagram, you can just like connect your Facebook to, you can connect your phone book to, and then all of a sudden you've got people that have got likes and followers and stuff like that. And on, 
on, on YouTube, it's much harder. Like people are gonna have channels that they regularly upload to for years and still only have like two or 300 subscribers and maybe 15 to 20 to maybe 30 video views on their vids, like if they're lucky. Yeah, cause YouTube is not like casual. <clears throat> like on Instagram, it takes me about five seconds to consume your daily content. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, if you're a good editor and you make your videos that are entertaining, then I can sit through your whole video and I can enjoy it. Yeah, I'll sit, can, I'll sit down and watch. No one like sits down to Instagram. Like people like yeah, sit not down like, to watch well, YouTube. Here's, I'm going to go. And I think that's why IGTV hasn't worked that well. Because no one sits it's down to Instagram be on Instagram. Instagram is a very thing that I'm in line at Starbucks. I'm going to open my phone and browse Instagram for five seconds and then I'm going to put it away. Oh, I'm literally procrastinating what I'm doing right now. My, gonna, fr my friends in the bathroom. I'm I'm waiting in line somewhere. It's, it's literally the it's, ultimate. I'm, I'm, I'm picking. On, yeah, like just I'm checking bored. the pulse. I'm literally like in between sets of the gym, and I just like pick it up and peek at it because you know there's been a couple of posts and like it's 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 you know snaps of a finger. Uh, but anyway, my very first video I put up ended up getting like five or six thousand views in a week. Mainly from like baby metal fans because a lot of people were like, sick, we've never seen baby metal. Yeah, you made a video about going to see baby metal and baby metal is this weird like Asian metal band. It's like a, it's like a teen girl I, band. I just, it's, it's like, uh, K-pop, but it's J-pop, it's J-pop, it's J-pop meets death metal. Yeah. It's literally like these little choreographed in costume Japanese girls dancing and singing while there's brutal metal in the background like really good metal like root, 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 double bass pedal you know like hell guitar like like they're going fucking ham um that should be the commercial for baby metal <laughs> what i just said yeah just go <laughs> and then the guitar going <laughs> and then everyone's like oh dude i gotta check them out <laughs> anyway you crazy. sold it hard bro Anyways. And I had a bunch of views, and I was like, okay, that's cool, but it's mainly baby metal people that are commenting, and there's like a few wheelchair people that are commenting, and I was like, okay, that's neat, like, cool, whatever. Um, and then just every time I did something that I was like, oh, this is something I used to do that's different because I'm in a wheelchair. Like, this is, a, I'm just doing something that's different. And I'd go grocery shopping, and I made the grocery shopping video, and that got a great response. Not just from regular people, like, specifically from wheelchair users, like, comments, likes, shares, like, everyone was stoked and excited about it. I'm like... Oh, this is cool. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm onto something. And then I made like a a video that was like how to make friends in a wheelchair, and that was literally just me sitting there talking to the camera. That didn't do as well because again, it's just me talking. I didn't actually do anything. And did 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 what? What's the other one? There's the chicken wing video, but there's another one, right? I think it's those three: the chicken wing video, and then there. And then the trailer. Okay, yeah. Well, maybe there's one more. I think there's five. I think it's um. Why would anyone want to be friends with someone in a wheelchair, concert video, shopping, hot wings, and I guess channel trailer. Yeah, I guess there's only five. five. Yeah. It's five. Yeah. Yeah. And, so I anyways, think, and I think maybe that's when we linked up is when I wanted to do the hot ones video with you because we were both geeking over hot ones. You you reached out to me before that though because we, we, we did like hang out, but you were like telling me about how you wanted to make videos and stuff and like I was making videos and. Yeah, that's what it was. I saw you were making videos. I knew that we had a relationship. I liked how you were doing stuff and what you were doing. And, and I learned the best by being around people that are already doing what I want to do. Yeah. Like just by, you know, like you can, like books I learned like, okay. Um, like videos I learned, okay. But I learned the best by literally just being around people that are doing what I want to do and just like little by little, like piece by piece, I like absorb like bits of knowledge and bits of information. And like I ask questions and they get answered. And so like, I think that's why I was trying to hang out with you a lot, um, which is kind uh, of just using me, huh? No, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, partially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, partially. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. mean, that's how I got my premiere pro editing was like, I, we, we had a shared, uh, well, I you like, had it before, but you were just on the trial. I was on the trial and the trial ran <clears> out and I was like, yo, it's fucking whatever. Cause I found the trial hack. Um, and and it was literally like you just never was, closed was, the app well i was i never closed it and then one time it closed yeah but i was also making like really cool workout videos that was also how i, got, I started editing workout videos I was for like, instagram gonna, for instagram i was like i make a dope ash montage like workout videos you know some cool music in the background and that was primarily my video content that i did was just like instagram workout videos 
which I thought were cool. Um, I was like finally proud of like my body and the way it looked and I wanted to make cool videos and get to good editing. And like, I was talk asking you and talking about editing stuff and, and it just reached a point where I'm like, yo, this is, I want to do this like for real, for real. Like mm -hmm. I want to, like, well, I don't think you ever like fully explained to like the reason why, obviously like, you know, Tony Robbins, like you felt like you really need to share your story. You were really inspired by all these vloggers and stuff, but like, the reason behind why you felt like you needed to make these videos was because when you were cooped up in the hospital bed, the first time you got like uh, the first time you got hurt, when you got hurt, <laughs> <laughs> the first time you got hurt, and then the second time you got hurt. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you know, you were sitting in the hospital bed, and all the videos they show you are like physical therapy videos, or like a doctor with a white background, like talking to you about like. Or they're old. Yeah, or you know, it's just it's not cool content. Like it's not entertaining. It's just boring medical type videos that are like. You can actually live a great life in a wheelchair. Yeah, there's... You th can do things like play basketball and tennis. And you're like, what if I don't want to do that shit? I want to, like, wakeboard and, like, do, like, cool shit, but I guess I'll never be able to or whatever. It was definitely the type of videos they show you are really, like, educational when you're you're in, in treatment. And um, a lot of precaution. Like, they're like, we're going to show you a video about bowel and bladder care and we're going to show you a video about skin care we're going to show you the video of the dangers of drinking too much alcohol and doing drugs and and you know like here's a video of a doctor talking to you with like a white wall in the background and i remember i was so my, like i knew my life was pretty much changed forever and i was like really craving and like hungry for some kind of videos because i didn't know what life looked like in a chair you know i'm i, I go through my accident which if you don't know much about that I talk about it on the podcast. There's a bazillion posts on my Instagram where I talk about it. Just check it out there. Um, and I'm I'm sitting there like, yo, my life's pretty much like fucking ruined, like forever. That was my perspective at the time. And I don't know what wheelchair life is like. And this was in 2008 slash 9, 2008? Can he have 2010? Wow, I'm dumb. I haven't talked about this in a while. Uh, 2010, so it was 2010, and that was like... Uh, Very beginning of 2010. Yeah, so Facebook was around... Just 10 days shy <laughs> of your 21st birthday. Yeah. Richard Corbett, sorry. <laughs> so, so Facebook was around, but they weren't doing videos. Facebook was just like for talking. YouTube was around, but... Wow. They, they didn't have a good algorithm. Instagram maybe existed. I don't remember. I wasn't on it. Um, so I would go on YouTube and just like search like wheelchair or like wheelchair videos or like cool guy in wheelchair or like wheelchair stuff. Like, and YouTube was not high production at this point. No, YouTube was very archaic at the time. And I didn't find anything anywhere. Like, so I had to learn through these videos and like through these trials and errors. And, you know, I spent all this time like, and, like hanging out with other wheelchair users that were cool. That was the thing. I, I had to find other wheelchair users to hang out with that I thought were not fucking losers because I literally felt like a lot of people like are pretty like once they get hurt, they turn into fucking losers. And I just yeah, cause the stereotype of wheelchair user, like overweight, smelly, unhygienic. People take care of you. Not you know, athletic at all. Not ath you, you just like sit around all day, do nothing. Need to get pushed. Like lots of sympathy. Yeah, I just, I didn't want to, I didn't. And you're like the antithesis of that. Yeah. Now it, at least. Well, even before, I, I, I. You don't I mean, want anything to do with I mean, that even shit. my first wheelchair didn't have push handles on it. Like, I didn't want anybody to even have the option of pushing me. You know, I, I, I wanted to be as ind fiercely independent as possible. And I wanted to hang around people and learn from, work, learn from other wheelchair users. And, and like, there was a lot of really cool people I hung out with, you know, like, that really made an impact and that were really important in my life that showed me in real life like, hey, look at this cool stuff you can do. Like, come do it with me. Like, let's hang out. And, like, a lot of trial and errors of stuff I learned on my own and, like, my big failures and whatnot. And um, while making these videos, I thought to myself, like, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if when I was first hurt, if I had a video that showed me how to go to a concert because I was pretty much written off going to concerts. Like, I was convinced concerts were not an option. Um, so let me, like, show wheelchair a newly injured wheelchair user, like, how to go to a concert. Like grocery shopping, I never thought that was something I could ever do on my own again. I'm like, oh, there's no way I can pick stuff off the shelves. There's no way I can carry a bag. And there's no way I can push a cart. And like, I'm like, well, yeah, there is. And I've learned how to do that. And I figured it out on my own because I wanted to be completely independent. I didn't want anybody taking care of me. I'm like, I wanted to be able to be like 
take care of myself at all times. So I, you know, I did that and. Didn't you say the doctors, like a lot of times they ask you like, so do you live with anyone? And you're like, no, live by myself. Oh, and they're like, frequently. They're like, the, but it, do, like, do you live with like a caretaker or like a family member or anything? You're like, no. So a lot of times on like, like paperwork or like when someone's like talking to you, they're like, oh, so like, do you have any, like, does anyone live with you? I'll be like, my cat. And they'll be like, no, but does like anyone like, are they like around? Like, do you stay with your parents? Like, do people take care of you? Like, do you have like a, like an aide, like a nurse? I'm like. Not nah, fam, like I live by myself. Like I got, like I'm by myself. Like I got a cat. You know what that means? <laughs> it means like I got a place to myself, and like I'm the only one there. <laughs> like my cat, I told you about. <laughs> like, I, like I cook for myself. I clean for myself. I bathe myself. I do my own laundry. Like I like everything. Like I got this. Like <laughs> don't worry. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> so They're like, okay, well, what about emergency contact? I'm like. My sister. Like, okay. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, anyway, so, so, I, so, I started, so you, your goal was to be 100% independent. Yeah, and, and th- I thought to myself, like, okay, like, let me... This is a very interesting part of the timeline where we're at right now. So I'm talking about videos, but we're also talking about, like, my, my yeah, journey yeah, yeah, yeah. after the injury. So let's kind of go back to videos. The, the videos part. So, like, while I was making these videos... Yeah, I wanted to be on YouTube and like be a YouTuber or whatever, but I really just wanted to like make videos for newly injured p- people, specifically males and specifically spinal cord injury patients because I as a spinal cord injury patient and especially a male spinal cord injury patient, we have our own unique set of challenges and difficulties in the same way that like female spinal cord injury patients that use wheelchairs also have their unique and interesting challenges. So like I can only be an expert on the experiences that I have and the knowledge that I have. Um, it's like expert by experience type of thing. You know, just the, the more crap you go through, the more you learn. And I just thought like, how dope would it have been if I, when I first got hurt and I'm laid up in the hospital and I'm on YouTube and I'm searching for wheelchair stuff that I found like this. And I thought, because like that's that's a huge thing in mine is like I want to not only change perspectives and perspe- per- perspectives and perceptions of the general public, but the general public are the ones that get hurt and and get spinal cord injuries and are paralyzed and have to use wheelchairs and then they have this automatic perception of like what their life is gonna be. They're like, oh, I am predestined to be in physical therapy all the time and I am predestined to be at the doctors all the time and I am predestined to have someone push me around and I am predestined to have someone take care of me and I am predestined to be overweight and stinky and smelly and, you know, like someone have to do everything and take care of me all the time. And um, so they almost like just fall into that path. And that's why I was saying, like, I don't like hanging out with the people that I thought were kind of losers because those are the ones that I'm like, oh, they've decided what they're going to be already. I don't want to be around that person who's decided what they're going to be already. And then so I'd, I'd find the people that were young and fit and active and social and were really just like, no, I'm just living my life the way I normally would. I just am in a chair now. So like that's that's the only difference. Those are the people I wanted to hang around. And I think if I would have had a resource such as a, wheels, a, to walking. A wheels to Walking or a YouTube channel or a group or, or you know, videos, I would just... I would watch that and be like, oh, I'm going to do that. That looks cool. And that's why I like to showcase myself doing cool things. And I like to showcase other wheelchair users doing other cool things because my injury is my injury and their injury is their injury, which is very different than my injury. You know, some might have a higher level of injury and they might be quadriplegic. Some might have a lower level of injury and, and be a complete injury versus me being an incomplete injury. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch the most recent newest video, the very first video that we did from the proper launch. Um, that explains all the stuff that I'm talking about. So please watch that. It's called Why Am I in a Why Do I Use a Wheelchair If I Can Walk? I think we should make it clickbaity though. I think that'd be really fun. Be like, he uses a wheelchair, but he walks. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely yeah, gonna be something like that. You know, you know, we're just gonna be like, yeah. So I'm just saying for people in the future, you're like, yeah. go watch the most recent video, but in like five weeks, they're not gonna pay attention. Yeah. yeah. So go watch the Why Do I Walk If or Why Do I Use a Wheelchair If I Can Walk video. And that explains a lot of this, but so that's kind of what wheels to walking is, is like I make videos for newly injured wheelchair users to help them achieve independence and improve their quality of life faster than they would without these videos. Because 
I think to myself, okay, if I'm laid up in the bed, I think my life is over forever. I have this image of predestination of what my life is supposed to be. Um, I don't think there's anything out there for me. I don't think I can do anything. I might be exposed to some cool stuff every now and then, be like, you can play wheelchair basketball. You know, like, you can you can go to art museums and you can do fishing and, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> you can do fishing and, and, and catch lots of large fish. <laughs> yeah, there's just like... So, <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things that There's I was... There's even a wheelchair accessible fishing spot on this pier. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know, that was one of the things that I, got, I, <laughs> I used to get so frustrated as. I'm like, yeah, there's adaptive sports, but there's like three of them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I can't, there's like softball. Okay, I can do that, but that's lame. I don't want to do softball, although I did do it one year. And it was kind of cool. Uh, I went to New York for the Wheelchair World Series. And the we, Wheelchair World Series. And we were Series. qualified because we were one of eight teams. <laughs> the Wheelchair World Series. Wheelchair Softball World Series. That's uh, hilarious. And then, there's no ba- and then there's basketball and then there's rugby when rugby is badass. But you have to be a quadriplegic to play rugby. You can't be a paraplegic and play rugby. Really? They call it quad rugby or murder ball because it's actually super aggressive. Like, yeah. Like it, I mean, it's rugby. Google murder ball, y'all. It's, it's like a mixture of like bumper cars no, it's, and it's like battle bots with people. <laughs> <laughs> it's battle. <laughs> Literally, there's each chair. Each chair is built a certain way. It's fucking to, to rad. like attack the other chairs Dude, differently. It's literally like battle bots with these fucking like cyborgs. With- Dude, that was like in that post you made the other day. There was like about transformers, yeah. and I was like, Nah, fam, you're definitely a robot, but you're not in disguise. <laughs> yeah that's made, hilarious made. you're like I, my body's made of a lot of metal am I a transformer and I'm like yeah you a robot but you ain't in disguise <laughs> you ain't in disguise people know it's you people know it's you <laughs> motherfucker you ain't fooling nobody yeah man so that that's like a huge like mission that I'm all about is like and you're, you're like making it cool like you're making being in a wheelchair co- something that's cool like not gonna lie there's been a few times where I'm like like when when like we were hanging out with Corey, like you guys had like an immediate bond, right? Yeah. And like when you're hanging out with Aaron, it's like these are like cool, inspiring people that have like done cool shit and like have gotten a lot of attention, arguably because they're also in a wheelchair doing cool shit. Like it's one of those things where it's like it's a lot harder for me to stand out from the crowd doing the stuff that you're doing because I'm not in a, and I'm not in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? I'm not in the freaking brotherhood of the wheelchairs, the wheelie boys. The wheelie like, boys, man. Yeah. I'm and- not a wheelie boy, and like it's kind of. It's it's weird sometimes because I've I've honestly felt sometimes where I'm like, dang, like sometimes it's cool to be in a wheelchair, like actually, you know, and like that's a weird thing that I probably had never thought about in my life before. And you definitely are changing perceptions that way. I don't think anybody's ever thought of it. Like, because your ne- doesn't didn't you say your nephew like once he like he was like I want to grow up and be in like, a wheelchair. He's like when I grow up I want I want a wheelchair of my own because sometimes he sits in mine even though I tell him not to he'll he'll sit in mine and he'll zoom around the house and I'm like bro don't it's a it's a it's not a toy and he's like I can't wait till I grow up and get my own wheelchair and I'm like that's adorable like I'm so glad you think this is cute and it's something desirable and something you want um, but I was, I was kind of like it's kind of like the whole racial thing where it's like you can't do blackface because you can choose to go back it's like you can't be a wheelie boy when your legs work because you can choose to go back I can't <laughs> you know it's like one of those things where it's like you can't do blackface because you can go back like you know you know it's like one of those fucking anyways yeah definitely. might be not the right analogy but it, it's similar in that vein where it's like you well you wouldn't know what it's like to be marginalized like i am you can roll around in your chair but then you get to stand up and choose to not be in it god damn it i don't get emotional about stuff like that but i, I know you I, but don't I, but i imagine that's probably like i know you don't but i'm saying like yeah. that's the i feel like if people were going to be offended for you they'd be like that's fucking offensive oh, pe- because... people love to get offended for other people i fucking of hate course that not. you're like wheelchair users are one of the most marginalized groups like you've told me that you know like well, per- persons really with read. persons with disabilities. Period. Totally. But, but I think totally um, wheelchair users specifically because like the disability is not the problem. The access is the problem. Mm-hmm. Like we are like we are on. A, and please, guys, take everything what I'm saying with a grain of thought, grain of salt. And I'm literally only using this analogy for the sake of analogy. And I'm not comparing wheelchair users to this. But I'm just saying, hear me out. In let's say the 50s, when there was racial segregation and white people were allowed to go and do certain things and be certain places, and black people were not allowed to go certain places and do certain things because they were black. Okay, it's very similar to being a wheelchair user because the way society is built up 
is that there are some places that are just not made for us. There are certain places that, and we are second thought, like no one thinks twice, like, oh, let's make this place accessible for wheelchair users. It's, oh, they can't go here, like, fucking sucks to be them, tough luck. Yeah, and yeah. also, like, it's not really that business, like, for example, if you're in New York and you're in this really old building and you buy it and you build a bar or something, you're not, like, losing tons of business because you don't, you can't have wheelchair users inside. Like, we're losing out on millions per year. Think about all the wheelchair users we're turning away, like... There's just not that many of you. It's true. And and that's also, uh, the, the ADA has its pros and its cons, but one of the cons is that um, old, a- older buildings, uh, ADA stands for Americans with Disabilities Act. It was put into play by the government in like the 80s in the Reagan era to m- force, quote unquote, force people to make things more accessible for wheelchair users right which is a great thing it's a great thing but there's some things that like new york city i'll use that example again they're is grandfathered in they're grandfathered in because there's a lot of old buildings that are considered historic and if a building is considered historic you don't have to modify it and in some cases you can't like you're literally you, you, not allowed you, you, to you change can't, the you structure can't, you cannot it. modify a building so one of the, the big things that wheels to walking is also to me is is teaching wheelchair users like hey the world's not going to adapt to you that's not their job your job is to adapt to the world and figure it out. So if there is a place you want to go to and there is a flight of stairs in the way, find a way to get the fuck up the stairs. And I'm going to teach you all my tips and tricks in ways that I know how to get up the stairs with friends by myself. Use the force. Use the force. <laughs> you, you know, like, like there's so many options, you know, you that. You, Trust me, there's ways to get places you want to get. You just have you can't just like roll up to the front of the stairs and be like, oh no, there's stairs. I guess I can't go in there now. Everybody hates me. Meh. No, fuck off, dude. Shut up. Like, shut up. You gotta do this on your own. Like you should know that that people are not gonna like conform to you. Like you have to Ah, here I go again, man. There's so many wheelchair users that are so fucking entitled and it drives me crazy because they think the ADA exists. All of a sudden, people have to like bend over and like kiss their asshole. Like it's not true. Like you have to teach people. You have to educate people. You have to find your way into places and to do stuff and to talk to people. And it's like... Yeah, and like your videos are doing that because like it's (laughs) making... It's like making wheelchairs cool again. You know what I mean? And it's that's, it's and literally that, it, dope because... It, uh, again, it was never I know, was. I know, I was just saying because like make America great again, make wheelchairs cool again. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Dude, we should have hats. <laughs> making wheelchairs cool again or some shit like that. That'd well, be funny. let me pause you right there before you dive into your thing. Um, objectively, we're literally taking something that is actually the most uncool thing ever and that's being disabled. And depressing. And depressing and sad. And also, dude, people would be like, I wouldn't wish this, wish this on my worst enemies, dude. I'm, dude, like, you're such a trooper, dude. Like, I don't, I would you're just. You're my hero. Dude, dude there's, there's people that'd be like, dude, you're stronger than me, man. I would just fucking kill myself if I was in your position. And I'm like, thanks, man. I've, I've tried to kill myself too. Like, fuck you. Like, like, yeah. Like, this is, like, this is pretty the most, this is probably the most horrible thing that could ever happen to anybody. They're like, man, I don't know how you do it, bro. I just fucking off myself. Like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do that, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, like, thought about like, that. like trust me like yeah we all do but so it's like it's one <laughs> of it's Christ. it's it's obsessively one of the most terrible things ever that no one would want to have happen to them ever in their life ever so much so that they would rather fucking die and we're making it badass we're making it almost envious we're making it to the point where like wheelchair users are going to be like holy shit like, I'm a fucking wheelchair user. Like, I'm a wheelie boy. I'm a fucking fucker. wheelie boy. Like, look at all this cool shit I do. Ain't nothing going to get in my way. You know, like, if I want to do something, I'm going to find a way to make it happen. Like, that that attitude, that mindset, that mentality is going to take you far. Because if you decide, like, in your mind, you're like, wow, this is fucked up. I hate this. I hate my life. This is terrible. This is horrible. But... If Why so, did this happen to me? But if someone like zooms around the corner, like drifting with his wheelchair wheels on fire, and be like, "Hey man, want to go skydiving? Hit you up later." And you're like, 
We could go skydiving? Yeah, we could go skydiving. Come on, let's go. I'll show you how. Here's a video. You know, like, that. that's the type of shit that's like, oh, shit, well, maybe this ain't so fucking bad. And, like, that's a huge message that's a part of my thing is, like, I remember how terribly and horribly and tragically depressed, man. Like, my future was fucking taken from me. Like, I had plans for my life. Like, I had a, I had a goal, a dream, a vision, and all of a sudden it's ripped out from underneath you. And then you have to spend the next three, six, nine, 12 months learning how to just live again how to like shower on your own how to get in and out of your own bed how to get in and out of the car you got to learn how to drive you got to learn how to eat you got to learn how to be independent like you got to learn how to do physical therapy stuff and like that sucks because then your future turns into taking care of yourself your full-time job is taking care of yourself that's shit nobody wants that and and like regaining this independence and like trying to get some cool shit going and it's like I, I, I want it to be this this whole like help individuals, me basically, the younger version of myself, that's the biggest inspiration for all this shit I do is like to help that kid who still lives inside of me, you know? Yeah, who, who's sitting in the hospital bed. Yeah, sitting in the hospital bed thinking about like what the fuck does my future hold and to help him build. Thinking about all the things that are taken away. Think about, dude, I used to literally sit there and just think about all the things I couldn't do anymore. I can't climb Mount Everest anymore. I can't do this. I can't do that. I, I guess can't I'll do never this. do I this again. This. I can't do this. Yeah. I can't do that. And I'm like, I can't do that anymore. I, can't. I literally would, I remember that was some of my nightmares was just imagining all the things I couldn't do anymore. Like I, I gave up before I even tried and if I would have had videos to watch to be like, no, this is kind of the dopest shit ever. Like, yeah. like, yeah, I, like I, you, you can literally take something that's like the worst thing that's ever happened to you and turn it into some, the best thing that's ever happened to you. But that takes perspective, but it also takes a role model too. You know, totally, I mean? you totally. know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I want to be that for myself. You know, like I want to be that kid who's searching wheelchair videos, who just got hurt, who's a couple months into his rehab. That's straight up like thinking about how he's going to kill himself when he gets out of rehab, but not telling anybody about it because, you know, he's really serious about it to like find my videos and, and be like, oh, not only is he just like showing how to do cool stuff, he's teaching me step by step how to do it. And not only is he teaching me step by step how to do it, he's, he's giving me a lot of advice and like tips and tricks and like perspectives along the way that, that no one else can say to me that I'm gonna hear. Mm -hmm. I can only hear it from him because he's in a wheelchair. He's been through what I've been through before. He actually fucking knows what I'm talking about from experience and not just... No, Billy, don't talk like that. There's plenty of people in wheelchairs that are cool. And you're like, no, they're fucking not, Mom. Wheelchair users are lame as fuck. You ever encountered a cool wheelchair user? No, all wheelchair users are fucking lame. <laughs> what I was going to say is, is not from like a doctor telling you. About yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I can imagine like a lot of like parents and stuff sitting in. What are they going to say to their kid? You know, because it, it is a lot you, of young you, you males because we're risk takers. Statistically, yeah, we're risk takers. Yeah. And, and it's one thing that I've actually said to you before is like. I've actually thought about it. I'm like, dude, if for whatever fucking thing, if I, you know, hopefully this never fucking happens, of course. But we talked about this. If I ever these, ended up yeah. in a wheelchair, I would have such a different perspective just from hanging out with you all the time. I'd be like, you know, it would fucking suck and it would really, you know, it would be very fucking depressing for me. It's life changing. It's life changing for sure. And I would go through all those same range of emotions and still have those like pity parties and shit. But like for sure, I would be like, at least I know that there is a new compelling future for me that I can start to create because I've seen it firsthand with Richard. Like that's kind of crazy that I, that I've walked through that scenario a little bit in my head. Like, well, that's one of the things, that, and this is me like back to our little bro crush or whatever, that we allow ourselves to have our own little thought experiments in our head where we'll like allow our brains to go to, down through this like weird path that is very strange, but just for the sake of it. Like the other day when I was talking about like, well, what if I had a child that like ended up being born and needing to use a wheelchair? Like, how would I... How would I think about that? How would I respond to that? Mm -hmm. What what would I do if like the doctor tells me like, oh, you're gonna abort this baby or do you wanna have this baby, you know? And I'd be like, well, fuck, I don't know. You know, like, yeah. and then I like allow myself to think Did through you? these things and it's like, 
Did you watch the new H3 podcast with Chris D'Elia? No, I got to. They showed this trailer for this video, or this movie, actually, with, like, Matthew McConaughey and, like, a bunch of famous actors and, like, Gary Oldman and uh, all this stuff is called Tiptoes. And it was about this dude who his whole family is little people, and he, but he's not. And he, he meets this girl who's a normal person and they meet and statistically like if your whole family is little people and you're not like you're the high, you have very high chances of that your kid will is, be is going to be a, a little person as well and basically the whole thing was like she was like you didn't like he she meets their their family for the first time and he didn't tell her that, they, that uh, his whole, and she's like you didn't tell me this and he's like well you know what was i supposed to say and you know like this whole thing and um it, it's pretty interesting but the concept behind it is like you know they they had this whole thing where do we have kids or do we not and like you know, you know, it was just an interesting concept. It's one of those things where it's like an interesting thought experiment. Like, what do you do? Yeah, and for those of you that are uninformed, uh, I don't have like a disease or a birth defect. This is no, lit- no, no, this no, is no, literally no. an injury. And like, this isn't like if you had kids, like the chances are that they'd be in a wheelchair too. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't like, work like that. It'd be like if you're if you had child a child that was born with like tattoos and shit too, because you have tattoos. Exactly. Like, it that's makes, not how it makes no. That's not how. That's not how it works. It works. But I just in want case to, you didn't know, that's not how it works. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> there's like six year olds listening, and they're like, "Oh, cool! I thought that's how it worked." <laughs> Ad- adults think that, bro. Adults think that. I swear to God, adults think that. You'd be surprised at the shit. Oh my god! Dude, like, d- don't even get me fucking started. Dude, what if you had like plastic surgery and your kid came out with like fake tits? <laughs> Anything all, that all happens, body modifications anything, happen to you. Yeah, happen so to it comes kid. out with pierced ears and like veneers and like. Dude, that'd be kind of rad, but uh, that would eventually just suck so bad. Like all the generations of stupid decisions that people make with their bodies, bro. Imagine all the fucking white trash just babies be compiled. and stuff. Oh, it's like, yo, you got tattoos in your left arm? I got tattoos in my right arm. Let's go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> be like, I, <laughs> you inject synthol into your <laughs> muscles and shit, and your baby comes out looking fucking like yoked, and then over time, it just looks sad. <laughs> Shaggy as shit. <laughs> Dude, what if, like, what if, like, when you were, if you, like, worked out super hard when you, like, conceived your kid so that when your kid came Muscle out, he was, like, like jacked as shit? Ooh. That would be so funny. Like, the condition you were in. Dude, what if you, like, were drunk when it happened and your kid come, comes out drunk? Oh, man. Anyways, we're going down too dumb over a but, but that's kind of the thing. Is we just, <laughs> we just, so we just allow ourselves to go into thought experiments. Like and, oh, my God. Anyway, sorry. And you, were, you were saying how, um, by power of example, you feel like you'd be able to make it because there's there's yeah. evidence of it. And it, it seems like such a dick thing to say, like, well, if I was in a wheelchair now that I've hung out with Richard, I, I think my life would be pretty good. But it's like one of those things but where... That's, but that's the truth, though. And that's, that's, and that's exactly what I'm trying to like make happen. I'm trying to yeah. make... make um, educational, entertaining, and empowering content. You know, I want it to be educational so you learn some shit. I want it to be entertaining so everyone watches, wheelchair users and non-wheelchair users alike. And I want it to be empowering because at the end of the video, I want that person who's a wheelchair user to go, oh shit, now I'm going to go do that. Now I'm going to go try my own thing. Now I'm going to, you know, not follow the status quo. Like I want to be the power of example for everyone, I want to I want to literally shift and change the perspective to the point where it's like, it becomes, you know, like it turns from sorry, 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 you know, like everyone says sorry to me to like people being like, oh damn, what cool shit does he do, you know, like They're like all oh, those spinergy wheels, like they fucking like no, be, be, like, about exactly, shit. Like, oh dude, are you rocking spinergies? Be like. Be like, do you do any like sports that are like not basketball? Like, do you like ride dirt bikes or like do you do downhill mountain biking or ooh, what about that skiing stuff? I've Dude, seen. You know, it would be like, 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 honestly, I, like I want it to think tur- about I want think it about to, this. Be like, do you do drag racing? Be like, I saw a guy he did drag racing. Do you do drag racing? Like, I almost wanted to turn into like this whole fucking unique special thing where it's like wheelchair users are like pointed and whispered at not because they're like freaks and they're weird and they look different but be like oh dude i bet he's insta famous like i bet he fucking does backflips in that fucking wheelchair you know what i mean like yeah like i almost wanted to be like and that's what i had to do i had to literally had to turn something that i was like afraid to talk about and be like open and honest and real and this has been terrifying but like it's been less terrifying because i'm getting such positive responses from people yeah both non-wheelchair users but specifically wheelchair users alike like I went through in my now nine years of being in a chair, I think every phase that a 
that I could catch someone <clears throat> in a wheelchair, with, right? So like, I, I, I first got hurt and like everything sucks and I hate this. And then I get like a lot, like some injected hope. And then I get a lot of support and then I like make it back to work and like make it back to school and then like all the support like vanishes away. And like that first year is like where I optimally want to catch and grasp everybody is like in that first year. So when they finally hit their like peak hope, not peak hope, but just like there's nothing more terrifying than your life going back to normal, but you're in a wheelchair now and like everyone's kind of like forgotten about you again because you're like back to normal again and you're like what the fuck's going on right now uh whoa you know like what what now you're like arguing with your family again and like you're not like yeah no one's like tiptoeing around you anymore like not trying to hurt your feelings and shit like people aren't afraid you're to back, fucking like call you on your bullshit yeah now you're, and, you're back to work and you're back to school and you're you're independent again because how long is that gonna last you know like when you first get hurt like i'm sure everyone treats you like a fucking angel like no one wants to fucking like hurt your feelings or anything he's like i don't you know i don't know what he's going through like exactly. i can't i can't you, you fucking reach, get mad you, at him you, you know i know point. he didn't do that thing that i asked him to do but i can't be mad he's in a fucking wheelchair i'm over here with my two legs what am i gonna say but now it's like did you do the fucking dishes you know like why did you come in late and and noisy last night like can you did you get the groceries you know what i mean because like you can do everything again but how long are they gonna let you not be a person and not call you on your bullshit exactly 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 and i almost want to catch people within that first year but then my story is this and it doesn't have to be anybody's story i started to decline i i started to decline again and that that had to do with like lack of support it had to do with lack of community because I kind of pushed myself away from the community. That's honestly, it's a sign of success when you can actually space yourself away from the wheelchair community a little bit uh, because you don't like need them or rely on them or like a part of them don't anymore. Don't gather more than two wheelie boys in one place. It's a, it's fucking weird. Dude, that's kind of like a rule. Like two wheelie <laughs> boys at a time. Like don't. Two at a time. You Two's th- company, three's you, a crowd, bro. Yeah, the third one in, it gets even weirder. You know, nothing, nothing works. Um, me and Kyle learned that because we were like a tag team wheelie boy duo. He, like he taught me so much shit, uh, mainly because he's just insane and takes conse- never takes any consequences into his actions and just does stuff. And then sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't work out. And then you're like, holy shit. Okay, I guess we can do that now. Let's go. <laughs> like, <laughs> like You have the biggest balls I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, dude, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go break into the quarry. But first, we've got to push up a 50-foot gravel th- hill. Gravel hill. Let's go. <laughs> Time lapse, 45 minutes later, we've both fallen out of the chair. We've eaten shit. Like, we've pissed on ourselves. <laughs> like, there's cuts and scrapes on our arms. We make it to the top of the hill, and we're both like... <sighs> Why did we do that? We're like, oh no, at least we know we can. Let's go back down. <laughs> You're like, couldn't we have just driven up this hill? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, let's fucking do this. But we were trying to break into the quarry. <laughs> it's like, and why? it's locked. It's, it's it's like, why were we trying to do this in the first place? It's like, all right, but like, um, that's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely a, a thing where pushing yourself is not a bad thing. But I know I I I I dove way in. And I was also like trying to find a purpose for my life then because you kind of like try to find a reason that this happened to you. I know for me with a religious upbringing, I, I used to believe everything happens for a reason. Like God has a plan for you. Like there's a purpose for your life. So I kind of like dove headfirst like into religion, like really hardcore and like started becoming like really evangelical and like real miracle And like I thought like, oh, the reason for my accident was like so I can share the message of God and like I can share hope and like you know, be an inspiration and like preach the word and, you know, like read the Bible and like, uh, I don't even want to get into that story, but (laughs) you know, that's not right. If anything, I became obnoxious and annoying. And I think a lot of, I think, but that's fine. If you want to find purpose in God or in religion, that's fine. Good for you. Um, that just didn't work for me. And so like, I'm like constantly like looking for purpose and then like I'm declining and declining. And then I have this like secret drug addiction. That's like, slowly eating me away where i'm like were you getting fat at this time or were you like trying no to- i was on <laughs> i was on like amphetamines and shit like i was not like were you like really skinny though um <clears throat> i was neither i mean i was yeah you were skinny fat yeah yeah skinny fat i guess um and you know like i got a job and 
This story, I'm not going to go into detail on here because when you sign up for my email list slash the untold story, I go into detail with all of this. So I, I'm, I'm going to skip around with this. And yeah, you know, I'm finding, you know, finding purpose or whatever. And Side note, I feel like I'm saying this on the podcast anyways. I feel like you should call not your, I feel like you should stop calling it the email list. You should start calling it sign up for my untold story because you keep calling it that. Yeah, I just realized now because two posts ago on my Instagram, I called, keep, it, the called, untold, the untold I called it the untold story. And then right now, I just went back and forth between it, if you notice. Yeah. So when you sign up for my untold story. <laughs> hey, boy, that's what's that. I like that, though. It's packaging it differently. Yeah. It's like you're, you're instead of, because no one wants to sign up for, for a e- fucking e- email list. list. No one wants to sign up Everyone for Everyone hates shit. email list, but I want to sign up for, to hear that untold, untold story. story motherfucker. I want to sign up for your premium Snapchat, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to sign up for that Patreon, you got You got that premium podcast. Mm-hmm. Hey, 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 that hey. untold story, motherfucker. Anyway. Yeah, so when you, sign up, when, you sign up for my untold, when you sign up to read my untold story, um, I, dive in, I dive into it there. And, and that was was a decline so i'm like back to work i'm back to school uh, most of my support has gone away and i'm slowly slipping away into a decline um because for me and this was not the wisest decision i thought independence meant um taking pushing everybody out of your life mm. that that everything you did was your own thoughts and your own decisions and your own ideas. And like, it was 100%, but the truth is that's not true. Like even non-wheelchair users, non-wheelie boys need help sometimes. Totally. So I just like pushed people, everyone away. So I'm like declining in secret really. And I'm like hoping that my like secret drug addiction- But also you're still really young. Like you're still, like people are still figuring that out in general. Like it's a natural thing for you to be figuring out at that age anyways, but you were just at a whole nother level. Yeah, so I just like declined and declined and declined and declined and and, and ended up um, in a really bad place in a really bad situation. And I don't want to dive into it here because again, this would take forever to talk about. Sign up for my untold story to hear this. And then I, I came out of that hole. I climbed out of that hole and and I'm now better than I was at the end of that year. So if you look at it in a graph, it starts with like worst thing ever, like back to good at, at kind of uh, the middle, and then it dips down below where it was at the beginning. So it's like even worse because not only am I in a wheelchair, but like I'm dealing with an addiction and um, depression slash suicide problems, you know, where I'm like, I'm way worse than I was when I first got hurt. And then seeking out help and then, you know, progressing again. So, like, I've had many dips and valleys in my life along the way, which leads me to, again, like I was saying, that um, expertise by experience. So, I can talk directly to every wheelie boy in every situation that they're in, in every state and every progress. Like, I have access to that. Where You've achieved wheelie boy nirvana where you... (laughs) I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a matter of, like... I can talk and they're going to fucking listen. And the reason they're going to fucking listen is you've been there. because I've been there. Because I've been there. And it's not an intellectual, oh, I know what it's like. No, motherfucker, I've been there. Like, I do know what it's like. Like, I, I have a way that I can speak to other wheelchair users, other wheelie boys that no one else can speak to because I am also in a chair. Like, I can be like, I'm sick of hearing you guys complaining about this or quit acting so entitled about that. Or you don't deserve this. This is something that's given to you and you should learn to fucking respect it and not expect it. You know, that's mm. that's the type of shit that I can like... Preach! That's the type of stuff that I can, I can talk to that literally no one else can say to those people. That group of people, ears are shut to that because I was one of them. But, like, if another Willy Boy rolls Easy in... for you to say. Yeah, you don't know what it's like. Leg Actu- man. Actually, I do. Yeah, that was, like, you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. That's what I say to everyone. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. Well, I, well, I mean, I mean, hi. I, I do. And, and let me tell you a quick story about why I know and what that feels like. And just, you know, go on from there. And that's another big added asset, added bonus is, like, so, first of all, A, I'm helping the newly injured wheelchair user. B, I'm helping the... The lo- world. The, the law. Like, understand. I'm helping, I'm helping change perspectives outside of the wheelchair community and inside of the wheelchair community. I'm also helping people um, stop 
during the down, down the decline and turn things around. I'm helping people at the bottom work their way out and come out of it on on the post-injury decline or even just the decline of the existing injury, you know, in the beginning, you know, that first initial, initial kind of like, and you're also, you can like, I mean, your reach is infinite as far as who's going to watch your videos because they're awesome. But also like people that are maybe not wheelchair users, but they're in a depression or they're in a really bad spot in their life or whatever. Absolutely. People that, people that have depression problems, addiction problems, and, you know, pain, cause pain, it puts it in perspective. pain problems, mental health problems, physical disability problems. Like, yeah, I have probably the worst luck when it comes to all of the shit I have wrong with me. I say that in air quotes, wrong with me because it's not actually wrong. And also worse luck because there's also definitely people that are more Worse than hurt. I am. There's oh, yeah. complete like, quadriplegics and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A complete high-level quadriplegic. Like someone that can't even breathe on their own. Like, yo, I, I, for a wheelchair user, for a spinal cord injury wheelchair user, I got it good. I have a low-level incomplete. That's good. However, still shit, but like relative. Like I remember- <laughs> However- I, I remember the first time I saw a quad that like was like really struggling. I was like, oh, wow. I'm glad yeah. I'm not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was like, I'm fucking going to Impaired perceptions. Straight up, you know, and, and that's kind of the, the thing that like you're saying, like I, I my audience is very fine pinpoint. It is newly injured wheelchair users that are young males. That's literally spinal cord injury young males. That's pinpoint specific, boop. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to cast a wide net and a lot of people are going to get in on it. Like I definitely see, and I can't believe I'm saying this without even like blinking twice about it, that to, to be on a platform such as like an Ellen show or something like that, to be on a platform like, does Oprah even do shit? I don't know. Does she still do shit? She has a podcast now. Okay, cool. You know, Podcasts or, are on the up and up, you know, my I, dude. But I'm just saying like something along the lines that can like, it's got a a big reach like i don't jimmy you know. fallon or fucking i feel like ellen's like the queen of that shit though yeah ellen. like the feel good like moms love it everybody loves ellen inspirational you know? whatever and I'm, like i'm not trying to like i'm just trying to help as many people as possible and if by having a big reach that that's what that means then okay like i was kind of joking the other day i was like one of the things i'm looking forward to but also not looking forward to are like the morning local news bits you know, yeah. and we just totally like joked about it and laughed about it. I was like, I almost want to say no because that's totally like no thank you. But if that means more eyeballs on my stuff, then that means more eyeballs on my stuff. You know, I think about, you know, the type of podcast and that I'll And it legitimizes probably, you to like parents and shit, you know? Yeah, and the type of podcast that I'll say like yes or no to, but like I'm looking forward to like getting on the bigger podcast. Like I don't think I'd probably be on a Joe Rogan, but I might be on something like an Ed Milet or like a Tom Bilyeu. Dude, they're on or, the same. Or, they're or like maybe, on the same level, or maybe bro. like a Lewis House, or you know, some something along those lines. Lewis House. I'm just kidding. What you got about Lewis House, huh? I ain't gonna say. <laughs> I don't. I, I I like his stuff in bite size. Um, no, I'm just. I I I don't want to spill the tea. But you're gonna have to spill the tea to me later. I'm curious because that's usually the response. It's either people love him or people hate him. There's like really no in between. Yeah, I used to listen to him a lot, and then yeah. Anyways, did something change? Yes and no. Like, I don't know, just vibes that I got from him, like, continuously were just, I like, I, I always felt, like, a little, like, twinge of, like, fakeness and, like, twinge of, like, hiding some shit. And then, like, a bunch of, like, recent things have, like, happened where I'm like, ah. Oh, where he came out about that one thing that he was keeping secret and now he's got the whole movement about it? Is that what you're talking about? I don't even, I don't follow him anymore, so oh, I don't okay. know. But anyways, I don't fuck with Lewis House anymore. But... Something like but, whatever. The, but anyways, whatever the thing I was going like to say that, is like, that, like, oh, I don't think I'll be on as big of a show as Joe Rogan. Dude, Tom Billy and Ed Millett, like, they, they have fucking giant shows too. Andy Frizzella, like, they all got fucking big ass shows too. Like, you're talking about top tier podcasts. Like, you're like, well, maybe not the number one one, but maybe the two or three or four. <laughs> like, they have, they're, they're talking about upper echelon shit, my dude. Like, but I, don't worry. But I'm, I will un I think unashamedly get, think I'm going to get there, man. I'm telling you. Dude, so. you could get on fucking Rogan. At some point. And it's a matter of like... And it doesn't really matter though. It's high quality, good value, unique... Co like there is no one that's doing what I'm doing the way I'm doing it and how I'm doing it. And 
to dive into a part of the story we haven't talked about is your role in all this. Yeah. Is like people were probably like, how the fuck does Andrew know everything and is like giving you advice about like all this? Like, yeah, the truth. Yeah. Is like, okay, so let, actually, let, I'll kind of tell like my side of let's, everything. Let's dive into that. Um, and actually, I've never heard your side of the story, so I want to hear your side of the story of how it went down because I've only I only know my story of how it went down. Yeah, that is true. So I um, it started going down. When basically did it go down on the DMs? It went down in the DMs. No, I think it was more like phone call stuff, but uh, or maybe texting. I don't know. Whatever. Either yeah, it's way. not important. Either way, dumb math. Um, basically, Richard and I, like like he said, you know, we bonded over the first podcast and definitely like wanted to be friends, but also at the time, like I was connecting with a lot of really cool people, and um, it was just like one of those things where a lot of people were in my network at the time that were really cool and Richard happened to be one of them, but it, but it wasn't like we were hanging out on the daily. Um, to be honest, I was really head down, you know, very focused on growing the podcast. I wasn't really hanging out with anybody. Um, hey, ha- ha- and also hanging out is a loose term. Like when we hang out, we're getting shit done. Like me and you, um, right now. Well, you know what I, I mean? mean, but I think that's also the Andrew MO is like, Hey, let's hang out. And you're like, okay, cool. But what are, what video are we going to shoot? Or like, what photos are we going to take? Or like, what content are we going to talk about? Or like, what biz deals are we going to get collab on? Like, yeah. I don't think there's such thing as like chilling with Andrew. Like, there's no, no. going to the movies with Andrew. There's no sitting around no. doing nothing. Like, you'll do stuff like with your mama or you'll do stuff with like Mallory or you're like, you're always like doing stuff. Yeah, you know, there, I there, like there's, there's, doing there's, stuff for sure. And and also like, I, it's, it's definitely somewhat of a little bit of a, not a character flaw, but like one of those things where I do need to learn to chill some. Like I had this weird thing against like, for, like for a while now, I've been really, when I chill, I will like go watch like YouTube for a while. And like recently I got into Black Mirror because we like watched that one thing and I'm like, oh, I need to like, oh, yeah. I need to start watching the show. Cause like I, for a while, for some you reason, you were so anti Netflix. I was like anti Netflix because like I felt like, a lot of people that were so like vocal about Netflix shit, I'm like, dude, these people are lame as fuck. And not because I didn't think that Netflix was making good shit. It was more just like I don't want to be like that person that watches Netflix and talks about it all the time. Yeah, there's people that you know those people that all the time on Facebook they're like, need new Netflix recommendations. It's like you've really watched all the best shit on Netflix. That's sad. Like that's very <laughs> sad. Like I've, I, you know, whatever. More power to you if yeah. you got all that free time. Whatever. I have a lot of free time to watch dumb YouTube videos too. I watch like stupid. But shit. don't act like you're watching YouTube videos aren't also a little bit of work too. Because in your head, I know how your I know how your head works. Because that's how my head works. You're going, oh, how did they get this shot? Or how are they telling this story? Or what camera are they using? Or you're watching educational shit or informational shit. Like I'm a, watching like, some nerdy what, shit about cars or something. Yeah, you're watching like a, a MKBHD, or you're watching a Peter McKinnon, or you're watching a Casey Neistat, or you're watching like product reviews. Like, don't act like your fucking TV time is not also I would a little say bit of shit. A too. little bit of my like guilty pleasure is definitely like David Dobrik vlogs, but also I also am still consciously learning and thinking about David Dobrik vlogs. Like when I'm watching them, I'm like. Dude, he does all this shit with just like his regular camera, just holding it. Like with his regular, and he yeah. Gets ten million views. Like, why is his shit so compelling? The characters, you know? characters. He's so good. It's anyways, the characters. Yeah. So let's get back to um, my side of the story. So, anyways, Richard and I started hanging out, um, but in a productive way. And Richard kind of like expressed to me that he was kind of he wanted to do something with video stuff, and he was like, you know, I kind of want to be around someone that like is video editing and um, you know knows that kind of stuff. And I was excited by it because I also liked, I was still getting into video editing and learning about that side of things. So I was stoked to like be a part of other projects and stuff. And currently I've reached a point where I've reached a little bit of burnout from that where I'm, where some people are approaching me like, yo, I got this new idea for this video. And I'm like, too many ideas, too many projects in the tank. I've got like 20 videos that I've shot and I haven't edited. Chill. I can't. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of it anymore. You're like, no, 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 like, no, no. Like, I love that for you. I love that for you. <laughs> I'm stoked on it for you. Like, if you want to do that video project, sounds dope. Can't be a part of it. Like, <laughs> sorry. Doing my own shit. Can't be a part of it. Like, this You're is like, where I'm at. I, I'm in the process of hiring people to do the shit I can't do anymore. Literally. Like, I'm at a point where I'm like, bro, I got ideas too, and I can't even work on them because I got other ideas that are taking up my time. So, 
<laughs> so, anyways, not that I'm shitting on anybody, because I've I, a lot of people are approaching me. So, anyways, and not and not to toot my own horn, I've just got a lot of shit going on. So, anyways, um, Richard was reaching out to me, and that was a point where I was trying to figure out how I was going to monetize my podcast and how it's going to, you know, I was I, it was before I had quit my job and. Um, I didn't have this fucking dope studio that we're sitting in right now, and a yeah. lot of shit has changed. And um, no, dude, a lot has literally. Like when you when we zoom back out, even like the past eight months. Yeah, that's what we're talking about right explosive. now. Like literally, like yeah. the past eight months or so. Um, and uh, I was reaching a point where I was kind of feeling the growing pains of the podcast. Um, I wasn't. It wasn't that I wasn't motivated to do more podcasts. It was just that. I was reaching a limit where I was so fucking gung ho and passionate about creating something that now it's like, okay, the podcast is real. I have an audience, you know, I'm attracting cooler and better people. Not to say the beginning people weren't cool and and, and awesome, but like I'm, I'm more influential people are reaching out. I'm feeling these growing pains. There's people that I would have had on the podcast in the beginning that I wouldn't have on now. You know what I mean? Just things like that. And um, I needed to like step things up. And Richard was like, you know, kind of feeling that too because he was working on stuff and he's like, dude, I want to do this project. I want to make videos and stuff. But like I'm feeling the growing pains of like I'm going to have to learn to edit and I'm going to have to learn to do all this stuff. And the equipment and shooting and it was overwhelming for you. You like you've definitely felt like the growing pains of like, I know that I want to get to this point, but I don't think and I it's going to be worth all it. this. Yeah. Yeah. And I was at that point, too, where it's like I want to get to the point of like being like because for people that don't know, the goal for me for the podcast is this is my favorite part. This talking to people and having these real conversations is so fun for me. Like I love doing it. It's the best. It's a little bit nerve wracking sometimes. It gets me pumped up. Like I'm nervous sometimes. I'm stoked about it sometimes. Like I, I, I look forward to these podcasts. The part of podcasting that's not fun is sitting down and writing the fucking like intros and the you know, and uh, actually like putting together the final edit and like with the video element, there's so much extra. You know, we got to clip together all the different edits and you know making the stuff. making the promo stuff and all that stuff and all that stuff is really cool once it's out like i'm stoked on it once i put it out but the actually making of it can just really bog down the whole process sometimes yeah. and sometimes i really wish i could go back to those days in the beginning when it was so easy where i literally just went in went over to richard's house recorded the podcast real quick wrote up a little quick intro recorded it and then like same day like put it out or whatever you know cuz it was just like so easy and so simple and no one was really listening and there was no there was no, you know, it's kind of inhibitions like, about it. It's it, like, dude, I could talk to anybody because yeah. who cares? Like, I'm gonna, you know, whatever. And it's now there's like expectations. When you get older, you think about wanting to be a kid again. But when you're a kid, all you think about is wanting to get older. Yep, exactly, like, exactly. And, and you were at this point where I remember, you, I think, kind of both Kat and I decided that you had to quit your job before you decided you were gonna yeah, quit your job. Yeah, because Katya Sarmiento was like a really big part of this too. Like she, um, <laughs> hopefully, she's listening to this. Um, Kat, now if that, you've made it. Now that I, my podcast is on Spotify, she told me that she was going to listen to more there of you them. Go. But anyways, um, she's a busy woman as well. But Kat was very instrumental as well because she was one of the people that was really pushing me to like quit my job and try to do this podcast thing full time. And Like scheming on monetization stuff with her and scheming on monetization stuff with you. I help you That helps me see your bigger picture. Yes. And, and when I understood your bigger picture... I kind of already knew what my bigger picture was. And that's when like the real scheming came. Yeah. Because you know? my template was like Joe Rogan. Like Joe Rogan was my template as far as that's what I want my show to be. But also with better promo. Because I feel like Joe now does a lot way more like clips and good promo and breaking out little pieces and putting stuff on his Instagram. But like at the time when I was starting this, he didn't really have anyone that was like dedicated on his team to putting out clips and stuff. It was more like fan pages, fan and, shit, pages yeah. and shit, which was stealing a lot of his revenue, to be honest, with yeah. like AdSense and stuff, which I'm glad that he finally got on his shit about that. But basically, I kind of wanted to like incorporate the Gary Vee style of like marketing and promo and all that into the like podcast side of things where I could just get real with people for a few hours. Excuse me. And I was reaching those growing pains. And Richard basically was like, man, I really want to make these videos, but I, I'm feeling very overwhelmed with like the level that I want to get to with my editing. And Kat kind of like saw both sides of this thing. She's like, 
Andrew wants to make money doing videos and editing stuff for people. And, and travel. And traveling. And Richard needs someone to edit his videos maybe. And kind of has a little bit of money like put towards investing into this project that mm -hmm. he wants to invest in. Um, yeah, I was, hello. And basically was I mean, like. Well, the original scheme was like, okay, I'm going to like help you get your, your podcast studio going. And, and the trade for, for getting the podcast studio was going was just have you over here. I was like, the, the more time you spend, for those of you who don't know, the podcasting studio is is in my bedroom that is not I, my bedroom anymore. Was that the anymore. chicken or the egg? Like, which one came first? Was it the, like, I'm going to work with you and edit with you full time? Or the studio was like the Studio was the first thing. Okay, I so, so, so let me tell that story. So basically, yeah. I was, com like, Richard was kind of like dreaming with me, right? Like, we were talking about, like, you know, so what do you want? And I'm, what's holding you back? What's making you feel stagnant? All this stuff. Because I was also experiencing the growing pains of, like, you know, people have heard me talk about this on the podcast ad nauseum, but like the podcasting platform I was on, like maxed out at a hundred episodes. So I'd like switch over and then I was dealing with, you know, just all kinds of shit. And, um, basically, uh, Richard was like, what's holding you back? I'm like, I want a studio where I can invite people over and it feels really professional. And I have this, like, if you're watching this, like, this is my fucking dream. Like literally we're in a studio. It's got my name plastered all over, which is really weird. And it's fucking dope because I can invite cameras, people over. We got cameras, we got lighting, we got foam, we got it's everything It's very impressive. Yeah. We just need good mics now. Yeah. Because these mics were the original mics, the OGs. OGs. Um, which they're fine. They're good. If you're listening to this, you're like, you know, it probably doesn't sound like trash, but it doesn't sound like you're listening to the best yeah. thing ever. Anyways, basically he was like, what's holding you back? And I'm like, I need a studio space, but I don't even know where to start with that. And also I was in a weird place where it's like, I also, before I get a studio space, I've got all these other obligations that I need to do first, right? Like responsibly, like I need to freaking do this, 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 this before I get into the studio. And Richard was like, dude, well, I've got an extra how about room. this? How about <laughs> this? Like I have, I want you around. Like you, literally you're like, I want you around. I want you to be here. I want you to, I want to be like in the space with you so I can learn from you. And that was what I was saying before. The best way I learned is literally by being around people that are doing what I want to do. And I just like mimic and copy and like morph and like suck in and like just literally just like steal from yeah. almost, you know? No, but that's how like, I think that's how everything is, you know? Like that's how... People, that's the best way that people learn. That's how, like, that's why you have an apprenticeship. That's what you know? apprenticeships are. And I knew that. I was like, I just need to, like, steal everything that's just in like his head. Just like when we did Simon's photo shoot the other day. Yeah. Now that I've seen how the master works and I've worked in and around him, I'm like, dude, I can make some dope photography, too. Like, now that I see how he works and I've exactly. got the cameras and, you know, whatever. Exactly. So, anyways, dumb, Matt. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> I love how I keep throwing that in there. People are like, what is he saying? Um, so, anyways, uh, Richard was like, yo. I've got a proposition. What if I've got this living room space out here that I don't really use? It I barely gets used. There's I, these I two like, giant chairs in it. And and like an end table and like lights. And I was like, I sit in that space maybe once or twice a month, maybe. I was like, I, because I'm, I w I'm very conscious of my space and not only conscious of my space, but my items and what I use and what I don't use. And that has to do like this whole minimalism journey I went down, which is a part of my story, which I, I don't even really ever talk about because it's really kind of like unnecessary. But anyway, I just knew that I had a whole bunch of space. I mean, it's 800 square foot apartment. It's not that big, but I knew I had about 200, 250 feet that I wasn't using. Yeah. Like I knew I wasn't using that space. So actually the original goal was let's turn that living room space I'm not using into like a video studio. We can build out like podcast stuff. I'd actually recorded a, a podcast in that space before. And we were like, what do we need to do to make it like echo proof and all that stuff? And then one day we walked into this room, which was your bedroom where your bed and everything was and the bathrooms next door and all that stuff. Making all and the, and the curtains were closed and shit. And yeah. the curtains were closed. And we were like, because we were talking about echo proofing that room, which is very echoey. And we walked in here and we're like, Damn, this room is way less echoey than that room. Yeah, we, we literally, like the carpet and the bed, and we started clapping. We were like, don't do not do that. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I get so excited for the story. I know, I know. We I know. started clapping. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and there was like no echo. And we were way less. And, we, and, we, and Richard was just like, yeah, this needs to be the studio. I was like, this room's better. I was like, this room's so better. And I was like, and I could use a change of scenery. I was like, I kind of, I'm sick and tired of like the way the curtains look and the way the lighting is when I wake up. And, and, and the, I was like, and the dude, sound I do not want to make and, you move out. And the sound of the fan makes. And, and I was like, I'm kind of like sick of it. I was like, this makes so much more sense for it to be in here 
than it does to be out there. I was like, out there's like in my kitchen. I'm like, no. So I was like, I basically made the decision to move out. To move out. And I was like, <laughs> let me just act as if my apartment is now just a railroad studio apartment where the kitchen and the door and the bed and like about everything is just like in one straight line because I wasn't using that space. I literally wasn't using that space. Uh, and it just made the most sense. And then we just kind of kept going from there where I'm like, I want you around. And it was working. I literally was upfront about it. I was like, I'm doing this. I'm sacrificing my bedroom and the place I live, which is very sacred to me because I'm, I want you around period. Yeah, exactly. And so basically that's why it was very funny in the beginning. We were talking about showering and stuff because literally this studio is in Richard's home. Like Richard lives at my studio. I don't live at my studio, which is hilarious. <laughs> you live in, this is my place. <laughs> this is his place, even though my his, name, his name is, is literally on it. Thousand, like I don't know how many of these are on the fucking wall. Not even count, yeah. But hundreds and hundreds, we can definitely say without a doubt, including the stickers, including the freaking cups we're drinking out Mm -hmm. of. Um, my name is literally plastered all over your apartment. My name is on your apartment more than your name is on your apartment, a thousand percent. Yeah, there's no no contest. Yeah. So, anyways, basically, um, Richard Corbett fell fifty. No, um, I, don't, I, don't, I always keep going back to that. But but basically, we've grown a lot. And so then, not only was I building the studio inside of your apartment, which took a while to finally build it out and everything. Um, it's like a but good, like, six weeks, I think. More, because we had to, like, weeks. sell furniture, and we had to, like, buy cameras and... Like it, it was it was a good bit it like, was a, before we it, finally it fully a, committed. It was a to whole it. bunch of thing and we had to like remember we had to put up curtains in there and fucking banged out the wall and like all kinds of drama happened. Oh, yeah. It was like a long annoying process, but then once we finally got in here and we put on this green wall and stuff, it was just game That really kinda made over. it. That really kinda made it. Once once this the, the sti- once the sticker wall came up, it was like, Oh, this is real now. Um, and endless Amazon orders and endless just like figuring out shit yeah and like and, and that was and like I, oh this wall is made of concrete like it just building the thing was challenging in and of itself but anyways not to get so bogged down in the details but like basically I just, uh, yeah. cat was like you need to work with richard so you can quit your job he can pay you to be like the official wheels to walking like video dude so basically i became the like video side of wheels to walking and richard was the brains and talent behind the like knowledge of the fucking wheelchair part like well he, yeah he's the wheelie boy and i'm the video dude like i'm you know setting up shots and having like the creative vision for like a lot of the videos and like richard comes up with a concept like yo i want to do a video about this and i'm like cool i think we can incorporate this and he's like oh yeah that's really and good let's shoot it like this and like we, we definitely have a really cool symbiotic relationship because it's like i knew he needed the space i sacrificed the space i had some money to put into it and i knew what i was getting out of it like i knew i was getting time around andrew and I knew I was getting access to him and his network. I knew I was getting access to his expertise, which is really what I wanted because I've paid thousands of dollars for fucking courses and I've, I've paid I've paid tons of money for books and like I've gone to events and like like I knew I was like, this is definitely a fair trade. Like Dude, if, it, if we, I was like, but anything, I'm coming out on top with this. We also like gas each other up so hardcore though because like yeah. when, I, when you first hired me, you're like, Dude, you're the expert here. I'm like, I'm not an expert. I just learned how to do this shit. I just got started. And you're like, but you know how to actually do it and I love your videos. And I'm like, I guess so, like, cool, you know, like, I'm like, I guess so, and you're like, and you have a successful podcast, and I'm like, it's not successful, and you're like, it is successful, and I'm like, I guess it is, and like, and then you're like, but I don't do this, and I'm like, but you're awesome, because you do this, like, we, we gassed we, each other we literally up so just hard. Gassed it up, and, and then it got to the point where I was literally like, I hate admin, admin sucks, I hate admin, admin so much, and to me, editing videos and like shooting a video and like figuring out all that stuff, that felt like admin to me, in the same way that you like creating this is the part that you enjoy the most and everything else you don't necessarily enjoy. I feel the same way. Sometimes I can enjoy it, but sometimes (laughs) it's just like thinking about dreading it. Fucking, you know, it seems like work. It's, it smells like work. And and I felt the same way with my videos. Like I would go out to shoot a video and have a blast shooting a video and I'd come back and be like, I guess it's time to edit, you know? And then like thinking about how daunting it was going to be and how many hours I'd have to put into it. And you know, like I just didn't, 
didn't like that. And Trust I was, me, dude, you're not the only and, one. And not only was I struggling and challenged with that, is like I lacked the knowledge. So everything took like 10 times longer and was 10 times harder. And there was so many. It's like when you first start working out, you have no muscles. So like even doing a curl, you like can't even like curl the like lowest weights. It's like where and do you, you have like start? Terrible form and terrible balance and you're gripping it the wrong way and you're, you have poor gym etiquette and you don't know what's going on. And that's literally what I felt like. I was getting so frustrated and, and I was like bitching to cat about it in the same way that you were also like bitching to cat about this. And like, there's just a whole bunch of things. And I was like, and then Kat's one's like, hey, so back to your original thing. She's like, hey, so Andrew's values are this, 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 and he wants to do this, this, this for money so he can quit his job. You're wanting to get this, 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 and this done, and your values are this, this, and this. So how about you just hire him? And I'm like, uh. You're like, Andrew wouldn't want to do that, would he? And she's like, I just said he wants to do this, this, this for money. She's like, and precisely. his values are this, this, this. And you're like, oh. She's like, if she's like, if Andrew can get paid to make videos and travel, like that's gonna be his his life. <laughs> like that's gonna be exactly what he wants. And I was like, that's okay, cool. And basically, I approached him with that. I was like, hey, um, do you want to make videos and travel? And and it was pretty much on. Like and we did it. And it's another one of these things where, like, you know, I'm in, I'm investing into the, to my brand and myself and into this mission and to, to to Wheelie Boys everywhere because, like, I know I can't really fail. Like, I the the type of work I'm doing. What and, is the definition of fail in this circumstance? You know, literally none. I'm I mean, in the sense of like, what I'm doing is I'm adding value to people's lives. I'm helping people already. I'm reducing suffering. And like, I think a lot of people are going to be a part of it. I think a lot of people are going to want to watch it. I think a lot of brands are going to get involved. I think a lot of sponsors are going to get involved. I think a lot of collaborations are going to happen. I think it's going to be the thing where like, I ain't got no problem putting a little bit of my money into this because I don't want a problem. I don't want a problem. Because, because I know it's going to come back to me, whether in finances or not, I don't care about the money part, but like, it's going to come back to me in ways that are going to be so much, so valuable to me. So like, I ain't got I literally have no problem doing that. And and then that's kind of allowed you to like quit your job and focus on this pretty much full time. And then you also have other money making stuff that you have going on, like the gifts. Yeah. Which are super, well, I kind of wanted to like announce that on this Which is super too. cool. That's, that's kind of the rabbit trail I'm going on is like, so we've reached the point where Andrew almost couldn't handle wheels to walking on his own. Yeah. Well, the thing that happened was it wasn't necessarily that I couldn't handle wheels to walking on my own. It was more that I realized that if I was going to grow my earning potential, like I was kind of maxed out with Wheels to Walking and Andrew Deitch podcast. Like if those are my only two projects, then I could handle that. And, and the gifts. So those but the, that's the, what I'm saying. Like I, things, I was yeah. adding the gifts in and I couldn't do And all the promo stuff and like. I couldn't do it all. So my initial idea was I'm going to start doing this side gift business. And if you listen to my podcast before, um, you probably know that I have, um, if you open up Instagram stories and you search the word Andrew, um, you're going to find my face. Even if you even search podcast, if you search podcast, you're going to find my face. If you search the word laughing, you will find my face. If you find, if you search the word, uh, hmm, you will find my face. Do you Basically, know, do you know how many gift. total millions of views you and your clients have right now? Um, yeah, 294 million gift views. And how long have you been doing this? Since September or October. So four, like four, four months. Yeah, four or five months. Last month we did 77 million gift views. So that's like big time shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a part time thing. So anyways, yeah. basically, um, and a lot of people don't know that because I was like really stoked on sharing the numbers in the beginning, but it was scaring me, not in the fact that people were interested, but I didn't want to like blow the gasket off this thing and get a ton more leads than I could fulfill. Like I was already feeling lots of pressure from Andrew Deitch podcast and wheels to walking and some other little side projects that I'd taken on that I was like way over committing and killing myself mentally because I was feeling very overwhelmed, very stressed. And that is not very like me. Like it takes a lot for me to get to that point of feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Mm. And for the first time in my life, I was like, I'm self-employed and I have successfully stressed myself the fuck out. Like, wasn't this the dream? You know what I mean? Like, wasn't this the dream to like be self-employed and be an entrepreneur and whatever, but it's not always glorious. It's not always what it seems to be. Mm -hmm. So anyways, long story short, I realized that 
I needed to create a media company because at first I was just going to spin off the GIF business into its own little side thing. Um, and I had, you know, I was talking with some buddies about it and we came up with some silly names and all kinds of stuff. And I quickly realized that, that this was going to be a road to minimizing what our creative potential actually was. And if I wanted to maximize my impact and actually work with all the people that I wanted to work with, I needed to broaden my team. And actually before that, I'd been talking about um, hiring interns, interns and stuff like that for the podcast because as I've stated, I wanted the podcast to be one of those things where I walk in, record the interviews, and everything else gets handled, basically. That's the dream, you know? Like, that's really the dream. Maybe I do research, too, because I want to be able to humor my guests and, you know, talk to them about the things that they're into and whatever, but maybe I would have time to read their book or whatever, mm. and rather than, like, being so focused on pr- promoing the last episode so hard, and then by the time the next episode rolls around, I'm so burnt out on promo stuff that I can't even think about making another little mini clip video. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. So anyways... Long story short, um, started working with some awesome people and we founded a company called Eyes Ahead Media that hopefully by the time you're listening to this, we'll have like a formal thing up and running, but maybe not. Um, Mainly just because like I've thought about this, like it feels really cool to have like a website and have like you know, oh yeah, come check out our portfolio and stuff. Come check out our portfolio and our website and our Instagram Mm -hmm. and let's make everything a fish. But the reality is like if you're doing deals behind the scenes and making money and doing content like it don't matter like what, we've already it got does, it doesn't matter what the front of the face of your company looks like if you're you're balling and hustling it's like exactly i'm sure people know like it's fun to like jerk off and like you know show off that you're doing cool stuff but for like your friends like so you can be like yeah check out all the cool work we're doing over at there are, Media. are plenty of companies that operate out of sheds that that turn up millions of dollars in revenue that only sell out of like magazines, dude. Like, like I know a guy who does that. He he sells um, equipment for uh, like gun holsters, like Final Mouse. It's like three guys, you know. Yeah, and it's like they, they he works out of a, a gray barn that he like shares with like eighteen other businesses in, uh, up up the road somewhere, and has no Instagram presence, has no Facebook presence, doesn't even have a website because there's just like a catalog that that he's a part of that gets sent to like all the police and fire chief stations all the police stations around the United States and like he literally is basically invisible but like gangster yeah. behind the scenes. And that's the thing is like I th- I'm very big on social media. I like having that presence. Like I like reaching more people. I think that it's silly in the 21st century to not have a social media presence if you're trying to make money. But um with Eyes Ahead right now it's like we've gotten like the podcast has been my lead magnet and like I haven't really needed to show off like, look at this video we made for this company. Look at this stuff we made for this company. Look at the gifts we made for this company because my own podcast speak for itself. So basically to explain it to everybody, like Eyes Ahead Media is going to become the parent media company of the Andrew Deitch podcast. So from now on, the Andrew Deitch podcast is no longer produced by just me as it has been for over, you know, a year and a half, you know, it's wow, you know, it's crazy. Um, it's, it's, been crazy. Long- it's crazy it's to think like about longer. Dude. It's been longer than a year and a half. And now everything, you know, when, cause people would approach me all the time and be like, dude, all your stuff for your podcast is amazing. Who does it? And I'm like, it's little old me. Like, and then they're like, it's me. And they're like, we'll pay you money to do our podcast. And then you're like, Haha, I'm slowly dying inside. <laughs> <laughs> like, But now that's a reality is like a reality is, is a part of eyes ahead media is you have the, the, the capacity, the capacity and the to, scalability and the scalability to actually do that now. Because before it was like, oh, Andrew, can you consult us in your podcast? And you're like, no. But but now you're like, oh, yeah. Um, but also sometimes I'd say yes because I wouldn't know how to say no and I wouldn't have the no power because I'm like, I want the money. But then I was over committing myself and they're like, hey, Andrew, didn't you say you were going to help us with the podcast thing? I'm like, I'm kind of busy over here juggling all these plates. I'm sorry. I couldn't get back to you. And then I'm feeling bad about myself and then I'm feeling making people be like, uh, well, I guess we can't trust Andrew anymore. You know, that type of thing. And it was like you were, really you were crushing o- over, me. Over promising, under delivering because and I should have been doing the opposite. Do the opposite, but that's that's something we're learning slowly. We had a conversation about that just the other day when when the yeah. whole that whole negotiation. Yeah. 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 Anyways, but basically, um, so from now on, Eyes Ahead Media will be taking over 
um, the production of Andrew Dice podcast. It's also going to be all the creative brains behind what's happening with Wheels to Walking. Um, there's a lot of other exciting projects in the works. Um, and hopefully by, you know, we're going to have stuff up and running soon. So you can check out what we're doing. But again, it's like not really necessary right now in our stage in our business. Cause we're like doing deals with people. Like we already have leads and stuff. Like we already have a lot of people that want to work with us. So it's not really, um, the, uh, it's not the most important thing right now, but, um, basically if you do want to work with eyes ahead media, it, we're working with long-term clients. Like that's, what's giving us the most longevity. So wheels to walking is a long-term client where we're, um, technically the first, technically the first and well, Andrew Dice podcast is kind of technically the first, but, um, Andrew Dice podcast, the first, yes. Andrew Dice podcast, the first, <laughs> mm-hmm. but anyways, this isn't a commercial for eyes ahead. It isn't a commercial for wheels to walking. I mean, it's, it kind of is, it, it is, but it's, it's, a, it's telling the story of why it exists. And it's like wheels to walking does not exist because of 80 podcast. Yes. That's a truth. Um, Eyes Ahead Media probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Wheels to Walking. So what we've decided to do, what you've decided to do, because I'm not a part of Eyes Ahead, other than just being your friend and talking about it with you and stuff like that, is like the, well, I guess kind of I am. You're a client. I'm a client, yeah, but I'm not like But a, you're also, we're more than that, Richard. We're more than just a client relationship. Your shirt's coming undone, it's un- bro. It's unraveling. It's me. coming undone. Didn't I say that this was a... Trash shirt. Trash shirt. I'm gonna have But guess what? If you have to buy another one. Wouldn't make a Dude, I laid you up real hard on that one. Fuck yeah. Anyways. <laughs> no clapping. There's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of preferences in this podcast episode to right. Chris D'Elia's podcast. If you don't listen to Congratulations, you're missing out. That is a hardcore shout out for Chris D'Elia. Um it's just, my just it's, hilarious. It's one of my favorite podcasts. I look forward to it every single week. Um, so I hope you're listening to that as well. Uh, but anyways, um, so to, to go back to Eyes Ahead Media, yeah. basically, nothing's going to change on this podcast, but um, hopefully the production value is going to go up. Um, it also means that I'm making money and I am able to grow the podcast even more. Yeah. Um, hopefully soon we're going to out even grow this studio space. We've been talking about like all kinds of crazy shit. We've recently. already been talking about like what the next move is Yeah. for where this space is going to be what the next move is for where we're going to be, um, what the next move is. Dude, like, literally, we're, we're, we're starting to be comfortable, I think, future planning stuff because yeah, we ha- I, at this moment that we're recording this podcast, haven't launched um, Wheels to Locking. Beca- Properly. Proper launched. I've been doing basically just, just beefing up my Instagram. Yeah. And, and it's already popping. It's blowing. It's straight blowing. It's blowing. And it's blowing and if, like a and, hooker. And if that's just like a couple of dumb. a couple of photos and maybe like a promo video, and like oh, 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 oh we 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 know we got some fire in the tank. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, basically, another thing that we started doing was the Wheels to Walking podcast. So if you enjoy this dynamic of me and Richard just hanging out a little more. It, like, it's I like, way more cash. It's, it's more goofy. It's way more casual and goofy. So if you felt like we were goofy and cash on this episode, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing um, yet. We recorded a bunch of episodes when we were out in LA, which was awesome. Also, yeah, we kind of glossed over this, but we spent like two weeks in LA together, which we was talked rad. about that in the beginning. We talked I think. about it in the beginning a little bit. Um, so basically, we've been recording all along the way all these little mini podcasts of behind the scenes of building this studio, building the Wheels to Walking brand. All the things leading up, talking about all the progress we've made, talking about specific videos. And one of the cool things about that podcast is that it's actually supporting Wheels to Walking directly because Wheels to Walking is being supported on Patreon, which if you don't know, is basically one of those websites where you can support creators by um, donating monthly. It's not even donating. It's like you're pledging, you're becoming a patron of the arts, right? You're you're becoming becoming, a part, you're becoming a part of the mission. If you, if you believe in my mission, wheels to walking, if you believe in my mission and you believe in the value that I'm adding, the best way that you can be a part of the team, the best way you can be a part of wheels to walking is to support me financially so that I can continue to make cool, amazing, incredible stuff for newly injured wheelchair users. And we've like, got like amazing videos and podcasts in the tank. Like we've got tons of stuff in the tank that it's ready to release. And I say we, because like, again, I'm really hardcore part of what wheels to walking is doing, but also like 
not only that, I mean, not but only as a head media, but like you specifically, me specifically, because yeah. we've gone on trips together, and like it's so dope because literally we. A few times during our trip in LA, we like sat back and we we're like, dude, we're doing what we fucking said we were going to do. Like we said we were going to travel and make videos and like we're doing that. And here we are traveling and making videos. It was kind of surreal. And, and it, was, it legitimized it, us hardcore. Dude. Also, we never followed up on our foreshadowing from earlier. Yeah, we have. Dude, you brought up fun for Louie and you never t- t- we never talked about him again. Uh, so anyways, earlier we were talking about how when Richard was cooped up in his hospital bed, you know, watching YouTube videos, he watched Casey Neistat, he watched, you know, Jesse. That wasn't um, a hospital bed thing, that was the 2016 depression. Okay, the Great <laughs> Depression of 2016. The, the, the Depression of 2016. <laughs> like the record, like crackling, like... Back in the Great Depression of 2016, Richard Corbett was sitting on his bed feeling sorry for himself while watching YouTube videos incessantly. <laughs> Feel overly enthusiastic, yeah. Yeah. fast talking, yeah, like yeah, yeah. great Gatsby. And then one day he found himself watching the Myers. It was amazing. He was doing it, see? So, anyways, um, so uh, you know, I'm going. So, but but anyway, so fun for Louis was one of those travel vloggers that you were watching every day. I was going on adventures with Louis. I was going on adventures with Ben. I was going on adventures with with Casey. It was I was yes. I was basically through the, the beauty of daily vlogs. I was able to feel like I was doing something with my life, even though it really wasn't. But it was it was kind of like cool and important I, I don't i don't know how to explain it other than that but uh, yeah so anyways we're, we're sitting in a coffee shop with our dude steve, steve Orozco, which is the previous episode was the previous episode so if you're listening to this episode of the podcast go back and listen to the last episode with steve he's the fucking man um so we were talking to him meeting him for the first time kind of getting to know him and in walks in this tall uh british uh dreadlocked dude and I see him out of the corner of my eye, and he's really hard to miss because he's tall as fuck. Yeah. And I look up, and it's fun for Louie. It's literally fun for Louie. And he's looking around for somebody, and I just instinctually, I just go, Louie. And he's like, hey. And I'm like, hey, uh, you're, you're not looking for me, obviously, but I just want to say, hey, I, uh, I love your videos. And he's like, oh, thanks, mate. And then, like, found his friend and, like, walked off. And, we yeah. were like, and me and Rachel were the whole time, we're like... Like, like I didn't realize that you were that obsessed with them too. Like, I used to watch them a lot as yeah, well. Yeah, he was like, he's like, oh, I really appreciate yeah, that. I really thanks, appreciate that, thanks. Man. thanks. And like, I was keeping quiet because I'm like, this isn't real right now. Uh, okay, this is real. Um, and, and we were trying to like have a normal conversation with with Steve. Yeah. And I was like, that guy's really big on YouTube. He has like two million subscribers. Like, he's pretty fucking big. He's yeah. a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's also pretty big on Instagram too, but even more so on YouTube. And it was one of those things where literally I was like, I can't not leave without talking to this guy at at some capacity, but I don't want to be a nuisance and annoying and I don't want to be fanboy and I got to be really chill about it. So I like went to the bathroom. Cuz it's super anti LA. Like yeah. LA is like be chill, don't fucking bother people. Yeah. There's celebrities everywhere. It's a normal thing. Don't feel like, you know, Yeah, don't, and I I went to go I just went to go um um pee and as I was peeing, I like rehearsed a, a thing in my head. What I was, I was gonna exactly what I was gonna say to him, and then just like leave. You know, I just wanted to simply be like, "Hey, man, I really appreciate your videos and what you do." Or be like, you know, "Hey, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. I'll let you get back to your friend in just a quick second. You know, but I just really want to say I really appreciate the videos that you make, and you know, it really helped me through a hard time in my life. You know, when you were daily vlogging, is I used to go on adventures with you all the time, and it really meant a lot. And I, I really appreciate your work, and kind of inspired me to tell my own story. And, um. And I was just going to leave it at that and just dip out because he was with his friend. I'd be like, all right, thanks. Have a nice day. Bye. Um, but as I was rolling out of the bathroom, he was like walking to either go pick up his order or to like pick up his. Or he was like going put, to get his coffee put, or something. Put cream and sugar or something like that. And I was like, perfect timing. I don't have to interrupt him. So I said the thing. I was like, hey, so to let you know that, you know, I really appreciate the your videos. <laughs> and the, the thing I said, and he goes, oh, no way. That's really cool. You, you got inspired to tell your story, you know. Um, do you, do you have a YouTube channel? And I was like, yeah, I do. I haven't really like proper launched right now. You know, I'm really just focusing on Instagram. And and then I was like, you know, I make, you know, what I say to everybody in LA, that what I learned how to say was like, I make videos for newly injured wheelchair users to help them, you know, uh, regain, their independence. regain their independence and improve their quality of life. And he's like, oh, no way. That's that's really cool. I have a sister that was born with with uh, spina bifida or cerebral palsy or spina bifida. with spina bifida. And she uses a wheelchair sometimes. And I was like, oh no way really i was like i had no idea that's pretty cool and he's like yeah i'd love to like link up we should definitely make a video sometime and i was like 
I was like, uh, yeah. I, I was like, uh, 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 video. Uh, like he, like what? he, like he never even was like hesitant about. It. He's like, oh yeah, we should definitely shoot sometime. We should link up. And I was like, what's the best way to get you? I was like, can I follow you on Instagram or something like that? He's like, yeah, sure. And I like, you know, hit him on Instagram and. Uh, and we were like, that was cool. And and he was like, yeah, definitely. When I get a chance to get back to my phone, I'll I'll, I'll follow you back. And I was like, okay, cool. All right, we'll see you. And I rolled off and I was like, dude, that's wild. I was like, but the only way this is actually going to go down is if he like, he follows me back. I was like, if he doesn't follow me back, I'm just going to get lost in the numbers and, and he'll forget about it. And like, I don't know if he's just being pleasant or not. I don't, I think he's the type of guy that would, would be not bullshit, you know? Yeah. He he's, seems he like really, seems really nice and genuine. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he comes off as a very like gentle giant kind of dude. Yeah. It's like very, like super chill and compassionate. And he, 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 him like Jerome, like are always like, you know, doing in case you're like doing stuff. That's like real, like, uh, humanitarian, humanitarian shit. type stuff. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, you know, I, I figured it was going to be something cool and he hits me back and we're in the car together. And I was like, bro, he followed me back. Fuck, like, Louis just followed me. No way, that's so cool. And I was like, all right, dude. And we eventually compiled a message that I was going to send to him that was simply like, hey, man, you know, I really appreciate it. We did that so many times over that trip. Like, yo, 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 what do I say? What do I say? And we were like, come yeah, on. Yeah. Like, you should say this. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you should say it like that. And we're talking to like Aaron or we're talking to, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Lunch Money or Corey or, you know, we're, we're messaging Lunch back Money or Corey, either one. I like, I like calling him Lunch Money. I know. I like Lunch Money too. So anyway, we. We message back and forth, and it ends up, you know, like he's staying in Venice now. He's not traveling the world like he normally does. And, you know, I tell him, you know, we're based in L.A., and we're in town for a little bit shooting videos, whatever. And it basically reaches a point. Based in Atlanta. uh, Based in Atlanta. What did I say? You said based in L.A. Based in Atlanta. And it basically reaches like a communicative stalemate where I'm like, uh, the next thing, but he I'm, said, but he said that he wanted to make videos. He said he wanted to make videos, and you know, so it reaches kind of like a stalemate where I'm like, cool. When it's time to make videos again, when we're out in LA again, I'll I'll just reach out to him then. But for now, we're at a good ending spot. We're just I'm just gonna chill. I'm not gonna be a psycho right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm probably you know like not gonna reply to his stories and not comment on shit and just like whatever. But it was but the the thing I wanted to comment on was the fact that you were in the restroom like re- re- reciting that like thing too. Is I probably would have been doing the same thing, but at the same time. If I walk up to him and I say my thing, I feel like as a wheelchair user, you have this like unique ability Where to people, roll up to people and people are like, oh, what does this guy have to say to me? You know well, what I mean? Well, not only that, but then if I start saying some weird shit, they can't walk away because it'd be rude. Yeah. You know, like I definitely have like a way to like, pull, I'm captivating. I, I pull Ju- people in. Literally, you, t- you said like Jalila, like when you first, your girlfriend at the gym the first time, you, would, you were always talking to people and the first time you rolled up to her and was like about to talk to her, she's like, don't fucking talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to she the was wheelchair like, oh, dude. She was like, don't the talk to me. The weird wheelchair dude that always talks to all the girls. Well, I don't want to well, talk to him. Well, I wasn't in my chair at the time, but. but but she, she the def- fucking she, she def- the she was, yeah, she was like, please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't please. Oh, fuck. He's talking to me. Oh, okay. He's not who I thought he was. Awesome. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like she That's definitely. Hilarious. Um, so anyhow, I, I, I do my whole spiel and you're right. If I, if I wasn't in a chair, I don't, I don't think it would happen. And it's, it hits home to him because he's got a sister that. Yeah. Who knew? Who's got, he said, he said she had a, her, her bad, bad leg or something like that and used the wheelchair sometime. I had no idea. So it kind of means something to him. And I just left it at a stalemate and I'm like, all right, cool. When we're back, we'll when shoot we're, videos. When we're back, we're back. I'll reach to it, whatever. Not it's, gonna geek. It, it's no big deal. I'm not going to geek. And then um, I've been on Instagram posting about all my location tags have been LA. I'm not in LA, but all my location tags have been LA, 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 or, or Venice, or wherever. And he made a post on his page, and I like interacting on people's pages, and it was like, it was a Trello app ad. And I was like, oh, no way. This is really cool. Me and my creative team used, used Trello app to, to get our stuff together. Um, to do our stuff. And this is this is like 14 days after our kind of stalemate. And then he shoots a DM to me. He's like, hey, man, when are you around to shoot a video? What ideas do you have? And I'm like, bruh. He's dead serious. Like, he legit wants to do some videos with me. Like, this is cool. I'm thrilled about this. And I'm really excited to cultivate that relationship. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to kind of the same way with you, just kind of absorb his knowledge and expertise and information. And, you know. I was just compared to Fun for Louie. Huh? I was just compared to fun for <laughs> my life goal. And I think, it, I think it also he's got access to a great network of people and people he's totally. collaborated with and people that have uh, are open to humanitarian, philanthropistic. Philanthropic. Ph- philan- thank you. Philanthropic attitudes. And, and I think it'd be really cool because, you Sounds know, weird. 
like I was saying earlier when I'm talking about like going on Ellen or whatever, like to me, what's a bigger deal is if I got a like collab with Casey or dude, that's or, why like make getting, a wish people or do. or getting a collab with Louis, which is gonna go down or or like yeah or or you know whatever other hanging opportunities, or, like, or, yeah, yeah. Or hanging Jesse or any other random opportunity that might come up because to me, like those are my superstars, like those are my big big screen heroes, like those are the people I I, I care about and I kind of like. Have, I'm in a relationship with them, but like differently. You know, I always talk about to some people. I'm like one of my my biggest. I I talk about my mentors to people sometimes, but like they don't know I'm talking about like Casey. Like they don't know I'm talking about Louis. Like they don't know I'm talking about Ben. Like they don't know that I've never met a mentor, right? But because I know him pretty intimately and know how he thinks and attitudes he has and personality, like I think about that because I'm like, oh. It's a one-way thing, like same way that people can say that, you know, Abe Lincoln is their mentor because they've read every Abe Lincoln book that exists or that's yeah. that's the kind of thing where I, I think to myself, like these people had a great impact on my life in a very positive way during in a, a, in the in, Great in, Depression in, of 2016 in the Great Depression of 2016 in a dark time of my life. And it's going down in the history books. And I thought it was cool, man. And I'm really excited to see where that goes. You know, I'm not I'm not freaking or geeking about it because like. Tell me who you been, freaking. Tell, tell me, me who you, you been, been, geeking. Don't tell me about fun for Louis or <laughs> anything. Bring a brand. Anyways. But it's, it's the same idea where I'm talking about my audience is so pinpoint that, like, I'm focusing 100% on my pinpoint audience. And whenever the opportunity arises to collaborate with someone or something that helps me cast a bigger net, that's cool, but that's not my focus. Like, I'm not trying to sit here being like, I need millions of subscribers and I need millions of comments and likes and views and I just want to be the biggest blah, blah ever and I just want to be the richest yah, yah ever. It's like, no, I just want to make wheelchair users cool. Like, I want to, I want to, I want to help that kid that's me, that's still inside of me, realize his full potential because the truth is, I'm still never gone sit skiing or downhill mountain biking or or like kite surfing like with fernando or like i've never done those things either or derp. so like while i'm also showing all you guys how to do cool shit i am also doing cool shit i've never done before mm -hmm. so i'm i'm also filling a need that i have which is totally. a, which is a need for adventure which is a need for fulfillment which is a need to try new things and to find stuff because i think eventually I will find out like, okay, skiing, not into, but kite surfing, I'm into, but there's no like big places to do it around here, but dirt biking I'm into, so maybe we can do some dirt bike, you know what I mean? Like, or like wakeboarding's cool, but like you gotta have a boat and like, I don't have a boat, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta like figure out what things I like or, or a lot of racers, you know, like um, drag racing, Corey, uh, dirt rally racing, Kyle, uh, autocross, is uh pete like there's a lot of these guys yeah there's uh jeremy and uh, flies helicopters and and so does mark mark flies helicopters too like i don't know how they do it they have figured out they've rigged some form of hand control system to like be able to fly helicopters i don't know how, i don't know but how tight would that be it's pretty freaking tight you know and that's i want to figure out how to do it on my own or obviously you can't just like be like let me fly your adaptive helicopter but i'd love yeah. to do a video with them and kind of show it off and you know yeah, that, that's exactly that's some really same thing with Corey. it's like we did a drag we rode in a freaking hand controlled drag racing car but you weren't like okay when do i get to drive it's like i just want to freaking ride along and well, showcase that, well, he, that he was able to yeah, do Yeah, and the thing is, like, even if he was able-bodied, anyone who builds their own race car is never going to let anybody drive their race car. It's yeah. like it's like there's so many little subtleties to it. There's so many little nuances and differences. And yeah. Like, we were driving in it. We, like, his, he could barely turn left but could turn right really good. Or the other way around. I don't remember which, <laughs> which one funny. it was. So he it's, knew. it's a 1927 Dodge truck that he literally built by hand, like, from yeah. the beginning. Um. I feel like this is a good place to wrap things up. I wanted Dude, to say... Dude, we're so deep right now. We're, we're like super two deep. and a half hours deep, aren't we? Like, we're, we're, deep. we're Yeah, we're like two and a half. Uh, yeah, about... So and, anyone, and actually, I haven't done one this long in so long that I kind of geeked for a second. Cause I my was recorder. paranoid, too. When I looked down and I saw the two zeros in the front, and I was like... <gasps> yeah, I was geeking a little bit because my <laughs> recorder at two hours like resets and starts a new recording. And I was like, oh, shit, haven't seen that in a fat minute. Because <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what? It's only 10 minutes? What the fuck? Like, but yeah. Anyways, so... Closing things I want to say is, number one, 
Um, really exciting stuff for Ized Media. Be on the lookout. Lots of cool projects working on it, but there's no like actionable thing for you guys to do. Just be really excited because that means that the, I'm going to be working on more projects with more people and being able to take more effort and energy from other creative people and influence, like input them into my podcast, input them into Wheels to Walking, input them into other projects that we're working on. So it's really fucking exciting. The other thing is we've got a podcast together, the Wheels to Walking podcast. Yep. We're the, like literally we're the co-hosts. We're on every single episode so far. There hasn't been any episodes I've gotten kicked off yet. Um, and we just talk about behind the scenes stuff. We literally talk about what we've done the previous days. And like, like the so, LA stuff was like super fun. So if you're and and I honestly did not post very much stuff on my own social media about my about that trip to LA because it was like very much a work trip. I mean, you were we were there to create wheels to walking content. Period. Pretty much, and, and I did when, do some and, cool and, podcasts. And whenever there. you had time to do podcasts, you hit podcasts. But it was mainly we like worked really fucking hard. We're here to play. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. We're here to work, and we if if we've got time to play, we're gonna be away from our phones and cameras and shit totally, because that's what we were that's what we were already doing you know exactly like i'm sure we could have made some really fun insta stories about like going to the comedy show or like going like yeah. i just know that's not what we're doing it wasn't yeah. what we we're doing so anyways if you want to listen to the wheels to walking podcast you should go to the wheels to walking patreon because it's behind a paywall so you got to pay five bucks i think that's what we've kind of decided on right five bucks well i guess it is now yeah i guess so <laughs> if it's if you go there and it's more than five bucks sorry if it's less than five bucks congrats but either way, you got to pay a little bit, but it's so little and you're funding Wheels to Walking, which literally not only is paying my paycheck, but also is helping other, it's helping Richard like make more epic shit, connect with more people, um, empower more wheelchair users and destigmatize wheelchairs for the world. And that's um, pretty dope. I think five bucks is very minimal. Um, you're going to access to other things. Also like the Andrew Deitch podcast, like soon enough, we'll have a Patreon. I just have been like very cautious of it because in the beginning i felt like part of the shtick was like giving out free podcasting and that was bringing in income in other ways which is cool and like that's what iz media is so who knows i don't know if patreon is going to be a part of what i do eventually but it's definitely a part of what wheels to walking is and i think lots of people are going to be super on board to jump onto that train um uh like you know it just makes sense and if honestly five bucks is like so minimal like, you know, I'm not going to go into the cheesy, like, oh, just sacrifice one Starbucks a month. Like, five bucks is five bucks. Like, you won't even think about it. And literally, you're going to have access to a whole other podcast with with us, with well, me yeah, and with and, Richard. And there's going to be other stuff, too. Like, we're going to have a dollar tier as well. Yeah, there's other ways you and, can support. And there's ways over five bucks. But the five dollar tier is how you get access to the podcast. Yeah, and five bucks a and month. even if you are unable to be a part of Patreon, you can, you can help by um, sharing... It with other people you can sign up for my untold story you can um repost and comment and like it's like on my uh, instagram, instagram and you can subscribe everything's at wheels to walk and you can subscribe and number two yeah yeah and you can subscribe and comment on on youtube yeah it's it's literally it's everything's at wheels to walking um you know how to find them easily like literally you'll be linked in all the show notes down below or d not down below what the fuck? It's a podcast. They're in the show notes. Where are the show notes? Where are the show notes? Yeah. yeah, unless you're listening on Spotify or some bitch ass Apple Podcast app where there's no links support. Is um, there no link support in Apple Podcast app? I don't think so. Like, like you can't like click away from the app. I don't think so. I didn't know that. Could be wrong. Could be uh, shout. Should could be shitting on Apple Podcasts for no reason. But I'm gonna shit on Apple Podcasts anyways because I don't like that shit. Anyways, um, <laughs> if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, I don't hate you. If you're um, listening it's a to an Apple way. Podcast, go give him a review. That's what you need to do. Literally, if please go give me a review. Give a review. And you could even say Apple Podcast sucks, but this podcast rules. Um, yeah, and honestly though, I'm gonna say this anyways. But the best way to like I think right now promote other people's stuff is to screenshot their stuff on Instagram stories and like promote it that way. Like that's a really cool way to promote your friends. Like listening to this podcast, you take a screenshot of it and you're like, yo, I really love this podcast with Andrew and Wheels to Walking, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, I just watched this video with Wheels to Walking, I've like gotten, screenshot it and share it. I've or, gotten introduced to stuff that way before. Totally. And so like screenshotting and putting stuff on your Insta story is like a really cool way to like promoting your friends and like supporting uh, small businesses and like shit like that. Cause that's how we all grow together, motherfuckers. Anyways, that's it. Anything else that you you want to say? Nah, bro, that's a wrap up. All right, dude. Thanks for being on the show. Even though um, we do this all the time, uh, go listen to the Wizard Walking Podcast, and we out. Peace. Adios. Boom. There you go. Cat is out of the bag. Uh, so it's pretty exciting stuff, right? 
If you enjoyed this episode, which I know you did because you're here at the end of the episode, which means you listened to the whole thing, um, I would really appreciate it if you could do me a favor and screenshot your podcast app right now and share that screenshot on your Instagram story. It's a really good way for people to find out about the podcast. You can recommend it, um, especially if you like this episode. If this episode in particular speaks to you, please share it on your Instagram story and um, tell people about the podcast. It really goes a long way. For whatever reason, Instagram stories is just a really good platform for sharing that kind of stuff. Normally at this point in the episode, I would give you some other episode recommendations based on this episode that I know you would enjoy. Um, Pretty much because I have a lot of similar episodes. But on this episode, I'm going to tell you that if you enjoyed this episode, you should just go listen to the new Wheels to Walking podcast because it's literally just like this episode. Um, Same people, same types of conversations, maybe even a little bit more fun and silly. Um, So the way that you can access it is to go over to patreon.com slash wheels, the number two, walking, the link's in the description. Um, And actually on the podcast, we said that the the Wheels to Walking podcast was going to be behind a $5 paywall. Um, I believe now it is actually under a $10 paywall. But you know what? If you really want to go check it out, go check it out for 10 bucks. You can go binge all the episodes. If you don't feel like it's worth it, you can always unsubscribe, but I think you guys are going to want to keep listening, so definitely go check it out. Again, that's on Patreon. If you want to support the show, the best way you can do that is, again, sharing those screenshots, but also if you feel like being awesome, you can go over to iTunes and rate the podcast five stars. really helps us out. Um, But on top of that, if you want to follow me, you can go to my social media handles and accounts listed on my website, which is andrewdeitch.com. You can find all my handles there. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff on Instagram recently, so definitely go follow me on Instagram. I'm at adpodcast. But that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for checking this episode out. really means so much to me. Uh, I've been kind of like weirdly feeling stagnant about the podcast recently but i'm looking back at all the recent episodes and they've all been fucking killer guests and everything so i'm hoping you guys are enjoying them i know i'm not pumping out as many as i was in the past but this whole thing with eyes ahead media is really going to allow me to pump out more episodes and allow me to free up my time to work on more podcast stuff so i'm very very excited about that um but that's pretty much it see you in the next one thanks for listening it's not a toy and he's like I can't wait till I grow up and get my own wheelchair